By the way, just really quick, how is like audio and stuff like that? Can you guys hear me? Should be able to hear me now. Okay, awesome. So yeah, we got Turtle Punch and Incars coming up first. We also have uh, two other matches going on right now. They should be getting that set up as I speak. But yeah, Swiss League format should be four rounds. Everybody gets to play, for, should be getting four games out of this. And uh, we're going to be casting the replays as they send them in. We're going to try to spectate as we can. Depends on just timing and whatnot. But otherwise, yeah, we should get a good amount of uh, matches for you guys. All right, we're underway. We've got Norska against the High Elves. Should be a pretty fun matchup. Generally speaking, I found this kind of tough for the High Elves because Norska is just really good at swarming. Uh, first of all, beating down that front line. They're one of the factions that have the means to do it. And the um, also just they are able to provide so much mobility pressure. Like in a vacuum, the High Elves can bring stuff that like one-on-one -on -one can beat the um, Norsk and stuff. But in terms of being able to swarm, uh, Norska can really uh, bring a lot of uh, pressure to bear. So that can be kind of tough for them. But we will see how this one goes. Okay, so for the Norskins, we've got, looks like, uh, we got some skin wolves. Classic, okay. Looked like somebody dropped. Shit. Okay, did somebody drop or what happened? Sorry, one second. Getting blue balled on our first match. Okay, never mind. I think we're fine. Okay. Okay, so now we're back on. Like I said, uh, yeah, Norska High Elves. Fun matchup. Um, generally speaking, Norska has some pretty solid teeth here. Uh, I don't think it's unwinnable for the High Elves, not by any means. Um, just, it just is pretty tough, especially against, like, if you're against a skilled Norskin player, it can be very tough. They can just bring a lot of pressure, uh, against you. They can also just a lot of monster killing for the, with, like, Javelins and things like that. Against, um, like, Javelins, Plague of Rust, just an incredible monster killing combo for those, like, Star Dragons and whatnot. And then, um, uh, what's it called? Like, stuff like, even if you just go Burning Head and also Skin Wolves just swarming and, uh, with the dogs, that can do some really good stuff for you. For Norska. So anyway, so now for... Norska, we have, it looks like we got one and two Marauder Horsemen. Uh, we got, uh, looks like at least just, just one Skin Wolf. Interesting. Okay, so one Skin Wolf. We got one just Norse Control. It's just a, basically a regular troll here. And then we got uh, Marauder Champions with great weapons. I barely ever see these guys. Unfortunately, they're just not really common in the meta right now. Where, where are you guys? But they are really, really cool. Huge charge bonus, massive armor piercing stats. Uh, very, very, uh, hit very hard, but, um, unfortunately that, like, okay armor, but also, uh, no shields and stuff like that, they tend to not be, um, they tend to get killed pretty easily. Unlike Marauder Champion, which is a super, uh, just incredible amount of staying power, uh, still really good, da good damage output, because they still, even for, like, a quote-unquote holding unit, they got, like, 20 charge bonus, okay melee attack, but really high weapon strength, so they are just a really rock-solid unit. Um, we also got one, two, and it looks like two javelins, just regular javelin infantry, bringing a lot of firepower, plus that bonus versus large, do very, very well. 15 bonus versus large, very, very big. Also got Marauder Spearmen here, and it looks like just, um, we got the Iris One Marauders here, this is the ROR, I think, that's got the, uh, Perfect Vigor, and they also just, a uh, regular, Mar or another Marauder Champion. For, uh, casting, we've got a Shaman Sorcerer of Death with Spirit Legion Fate Abuna Classic Kit. And we've got Wolfric the Wanderer here on his horsey. He's bringing in uh, Sword of Torgold, Hunter of Champions, and uh, Sea Fang. That's that boat thing. For the High Elves, we've got one, two, and three Silver Helms. We've got an Archmage of Fire. She's got Burning Head and Flame Sword of Ruin. We've got a big old line of spears here, along with a couple Phoenix Guards, just Elite Halberd units. Talents of Torquilita for some more of that fire synergy. They do that fire damage and that flammable weakness. Uh, a couple Lord and Sea Guards. Looks like one, two. 
three and four. Two of them get shields, two no shields. And then just uh, another Spearman here on the flank. And with that said, let's get this going. Let's see how they do. So Norska, they did a little bit of poke with their um, Javelin, th their Skirmishers, but not too much damage there. Otherwise, Silverhelms look like they're teasing. Maybe looking to try to get some cheeky charges in here. Although they do have the Skin Wolves and um, Javelin and Skirmisher support here in case the uh, High Elves do decide to commit. Spirit Leech down the caster early, just trying to get some damage early and often with Spirit Leech is really is a good, uh, such a good spell right now. Uh, we got Silver Helms charging in, getting some damage in on the Marauder Champions and whatnot, doing okay work here. Marauder Champions in particular got really good armor value, so that's going to be nice for them. However, these Silver Helms are kind of get, getting a free look shot into these Marauder Javelins. They don't really have anything to support them. Skin Wolves are staying here in the trees, in the tree line, and these other Javelins aren't in a position to turn and return fire. So yeah, rough start for those Javelins. And uh, Silver Helm's getting some good work in. More charges onto these uh, Marauders, just like the Armored Traps, going to be able to uh, get some really good work in. Otherwise, Wolfric and this uh, Skirmisher Corps are flanking around, looks like. And uh, these cha Marauder Champions, like, they have high armor. However, just like this much volume of fire, we got, what is it, four? Or one, two, and three, and four uh, Archers firing in. That is going to uh, pay dividends. It'd be rough. Uh, meanwhile, these Lothan Seek are turning around to shoot at these Marauder Champions, who are themselves taking a bit of damage. Those Spearmen are going to be holding for a decent amount of time, especially since there's not much else pr other pressure coming in quite just yet. Otherwise, uh, Skirmish Core is running around. They're trying to get their shots into those Silver Helms, looks like. we got other Marauders finally getting into the fray here. we got these ones coming in. Looks like they're going to be trying to come in on the Phoenix Guard. Um, otherwise, yeah, you really, in my opinion, really do want to be just pushing up with your mobility, swarming and getting along each of these flanks at once as much as you can. But otherwise, now you have these trolls. You do have Silver Helms piling in with the trolls. Like, they'll be able to do decent damage. But now, you've got these Skin Wolves coming in here on, from the flank. They're actually going to be able to do some really nice work into the Silver Helms. So, the trolls, unfortunately, with their weak leadership, did route off. However, those Skin Wolves should be able to at least get some damage here. Especially since they didn't take a charge. That's very, very nice for them. But yeah, the um, Archmage is still getting uh, whittled down with those uh, Spirit Leeches. Burning Head going down here onto those Javelins. They're kind of bunched up, squared up in a sort of way, so it do doesn't take as many damage as they would down the line. But still some decent work there. And uh, your Trolls, they are routing off. However, it doesn't look like they may be able to be um, able to avoid getting pursued. Especially now Now you've got a good trader because the Skin Wolves are still in combat. Within a regular grind, not taking a charge with the Silver Helms, they'll do very well. Plus they have uh, Javelins coming in with Fire Support. That's going to be nice for them. But uh, on this infantry fight, infantry fight, it do, things do look pretty solid for the High Elves. Their archer line is mostly undisturbed. These guys got uh, hurt pretty bad, I'm guessing, by uh, Wolfric, his, like, boat thingy. But um, you got Phoenix Guard in combat with great weapons who could not get a charge bonus onto them, which is actually really nice for them. Because, yeah, they um just really great stats on these guys. If you can get them into melee onto good targets, they can do good work. And uh, plus, you got Overwatch Fire coming in here. You got these spears being run off by those um, archers and those javelins. So one saving grace here for the Norskins right now is if they can get a snipe on this caster, that actually can be quite nice for them. However, she does have plenty of, like, she got Silver and Guard, she's got Phoenix Guard, she's got Love and Sea Guard. She can just run straight through them and use them as a buffering to try to keep these uh, these horse characters at bay. So yeah, I think you really want to path through with this Arse Mage. Just get her, like, basically back here towards your Phoenix Guard and um, force them to go through there. Although with those uh, Spirit Leeches coming in, I think maybe like two or three Spirit Leech, like actually with this one, two more Spirit Leeches and she's done. So I think you actually want to go way back out of range of the Spirit Leeches and um, you can use your Burning Head Spike pop in for the Burning Head and go out, but like sparingly, like try to come in from the side and force that Shaman to commit, especially now the Shaman's stuck in some Spears. Because uh, unfortunately with Horde's characters, as you, can, as you can see, they don't really path through uh, infantry too well, so they're going to be stuck for a long time. So yeah, that's not um, the greatest space for her. Otherwise, things do look like they're going pretty well for the uh, High Elves. Yeah, the Skin Wolves, uh, unfortunately, yeah, they were able to get the, uh, the charge onto the Silver Helms, unfortunately for the High Elf player. They're going to get good damage here, but um, otherwise, it looks like the infantry fight has gone um, significantly in the favor of the uh, High Elves, which unfortunately means, like, this mass isn't going to be able to do much against, like, these trolls, like, what are they, they going to charge into? Like, the Halberds, Spears, Silver Guard, Log and Sea Guard, everything there is going to be something that's very difficult for them to deal with, so... On their own, like without infantry support. So that's rough for them. Silver Helm's getting a charge onto those Marauder Horsemen is going to be fantastic for them. Excellent target for them. Your Archmage is nice and safe from the uh, Shaman Sorcerer Death, however. Okay, so the Shaman Sorcerer did overcast that uh, Spirit Leech, so that is nice for them. So they are going to get the Snipe, because she should either route if that doesn't kill her. She's got two ticks left, that should kill her. Yep, so the Archmage is down, it looks like. So that is unfortunate for the High Elves. However, 
We are talking about high elves here. Elves have fantastic leadership. Even with that leadership debuff from losing their lord, that is going to be, they still should be able to be pretty resilient here. Uh, it's not like the burning heads are particularly missed because a lot of the Norsekin infantry is kind of beat up right now. And since you do have pretty healthy Phoenix Guard, you got one. This guy's at half health, but still, like, look at their leadership. Totally fine. Um, got a lower boats. Did come in here. Did go, did good do did do good damage. Excuse me. And uh, what do we got? But so he's got zero uses of that left. The Phoenix Guard are still in good shape here because their leadership is. I think they're at 90 base leadership. Yeah, plus 90 percent, 30 percent physical resistance. It's really hard for what the Nor um, Norskins have to dislodge them. Because even with like Marauder Great with Champion Great weapons are ostensibly supposed to be able to do really well into them. That 30% physical resistance plus their amazing stats, they're just like they're gonna be able to do fine. Like if I'm the um high elf player, just like use your archers, just pick that pick off everything you can. Um use your Phoenix Guard, just get them onto these Marauder Champions or yeah, Marauder Champions, let them do their work, and then um you just have so much uh just let your archers keep shooting. Yeah, what are you guys? You guys are Marauder Champions as well. Um, like, if you can peel back, like, peel back your uh, archers so, like, they're here, here, and then get this guy in here in the middle so that way you can get a concave of fire going. Because, like, Wolfric right now, he honestly just can't really do much for you now that his boat, his boats are gone. Like, he technically is a good, because he's a duelist character. He's not really good at clear crowd clearing when he's on um, horseback, so he's just not going to do that well, especially since all the infantry here is stuff that's good against him because they're anti-large. So you don't have to worry. I don't think you wor should worry much about Wolfric at this point. Just like focus on clearing out like the, just this infantry. Get shots into these guys, um, front, especially like rear shots so that you don't get into those bronze shields and you should be just fine. Um, yeah, like these skin wolves, like they are, they're a good source of mobile pressure for the Norsekins. The problem isn't at this point, like they can't, they can't use that mobile pressure into anything that really isn't uh, amazing against them. So yeah. So far, it definitely looks like um, High Elves will be coming away with this. Right now, their balance of power for Norska is heavily lean, uh, leaning into um, this mostly healthy Wolfric, but unfortunately, that healthy Wolfric can't really do much here. So, yeah. And the uh, High Elves do take the, get, take the day. GG to, um, I think it was in cars it was on um, High Elves. Very, very nice from them. Let me just, can we go to the long screen so I can get the armies? There we go. So yeah, uh, so for Turbo Punch, I think the biggest mistake here was that you kind of trickled in a lot of your assets, like your Marauders and stuff like that were kind of moving in one at once. Like you had that one that was sent in really early, they just got shot to pieces because the High Elf player could focus on them. With the High Elves, what you really want to do is uh, you want to send all of, get all of your mobile assets, all of your infantry, all of them coming in around the, just about the same time. So that way you can just uh, pressure all of these like range pieces and stuff like that at once. And with, uh, yeah, like Wolfric, like he got good value because you have your boats with Wolfric, your Seafang. So that way you can get good work on the stuff like Phoenix Guard. This is a really juicy target for them. Uh, your Skin Wolves also, I think, uh, they were able to get good work in. Decent work in onto those uh, Silver Helms and stuff like that. But yeah, I think the really just like trickling them in, like the, the way you did was a rough spot. Spirit Leeching the Caster is a good move. That was excellent. Like, look at their Caster didn't get that much because you basically just put them on a timer at that point until like she dies. So that was good. But yeah, I think the main problem was just like trickling in your stuff initially, so very slowly initially, and that just let the high ups get an upper hand in that infantry trade. So yeah, otherwise, uh, GG, the high up player did pretty solidly well. Um, overall, like it's, t it's tough with the uh, Spear Leech there just going onto your Archmage. So that can be tough to deal with. You maybe want to just like screen out backwards a little bit. But uh, otherwise, mostly you were fine. Like you kept your archers online. Uh, yeah, pretty good. GG. So with that said, uh, let's try to find our next match. Okay, who's on? So this is uh, Incars. Do we have another match? I don't have an. I don't have a replay sent in. Let's see how we're doing here. Hmm. So we might just have to be waiting for replays here because we got our Incars battle in. If we don't get a replay soon, I'll probably just hop into like a quick battle just to try to get something going for the stream. Let's see, who do we have on right now? J200, and Bess, and Surprise. Where's Surprise? Okay. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Eh, fuck it. Okay, I'm gonna just do a quick battle really quickly since we don't have 
anything going. So, impromptu quick battle, just to try to get something, have something on for stream while I wait for their, we just got done. Do you have your uh, replay, the best? If you have your replay, you can just send it to me really quick, I can cast it. Yep, okay, awesome. Okay, it looks like we got our first replay in. Let's get you, let's get you saved really quick. Pillar bone. Okay, so it is on the wrong map, but I don't know. We can whatever. Whatever. No big deal. Okay, so anyway, we got the Dark Elves versus Grand Cathay. Interesting matchup here. Interesting leadership, too. We got Chromebone here. That's going to be pretty cool. So let's load in here. So for the Dark Elves, yeah. We're trying to get something. This is a small map, so I'll try to get through the armies quickly. We got four Dark Shards with shields. Okay, so yeah, we got four dark shards with shields. We got um, some uh, bleak sword, a mix of bleak sword, bleak swords and dread spears as well for our leadership. We got crone on her uh, fucking I forget I I cauldron of blood I think it's called. I see this thing so rarely I forgot what it's called. But yeah, it's her big old cauldron of blood. This thing used to be so busted back in the like game two because it was bugged. But these days it's like you never see it. It's just not that good. But anyway, she's on her cauldron of blood. I forget what this thing even does. Does this give you some like AOE buff or something? Gaze of Cain's her main thing, which brings you main thing. Fury of Cain's also her thing. Okay, it has a blood shield of cane. I know it does that. Okay, otherwise, it's a big it's a big monstrous chariot thingy, okay? And then you also have the uh, this war hydra here. Very awesome. Very cool monster. And uh, where's the other one? You got the crows of cane. Those are the harpies. These are the ones that heal themselves when they're in combat. Pretty solid unit. And uh, there was the one other thing. And, of course, we have a blood rack medusa. She uh, is actually the opposite of the cauldron. She was a meme when she first came into the game. But now she's actually pretty solid. Her uh, shots do way more work against um infantry and in melee she now has an anti-large and she does majority armor piercing damage pretty pretty solid good work here for Cathayans we have an uh interesting formation here we got our crane gunners up first somebody's been watching Grand Myth of Game of Thrones and our artillery's up kind of mostly up front as well interesting uh so we got peasant long spears peasant long spears more peasant long spears we got a bunch of jade warriors here a couple on the flanks we got iron hail gunners some really uh high damage uh low range low armor but very very high damage output Fire in rocket here just for that uh, large AOE um, explosive uh, damage. Got Seitang the Watcher here, the big man himself with his big old bow, looking quite majestic. Uh, does a ton of damage against single entities basically, and he has no shortage of targets here. And uh, what else we got? We got more peasant long spearmen. We got some halberds as well. Looks like two halberds and like what is that? One, two, and three uh, jade warriors. Otherwise, am I missing any mobility? Nope. Okay, not missing any mobility. Those are the armies, and uh, should be good. Also, I forgot to mention, for your uh, magic, the um, Dark Elves have uh, Melkos Mystifying Miasma and Pit of Shades on the Shadows Caster, and the uh, Shugan Gun Lord of Yin Magic. She came here with Talent of the Night and the Ancestral Warrior Summon. So yeah, the Harpies are getting right onto the um, Fire Rain Rocket to start with, although they did take a lot of damage here. You may want to get some peel onto the, uh, the Shugan Gun Lord's trying to help out, get some damage into them. However, yeah, they are taking a lot of damage here. Not as much as they would if you, like, rear charge them, especially since Harpies are in the air. If you fly over, like, behind them, and then charge in from the rear, you actually do a lot better against them. Um, thank you guys did watch my first game. Hey, Turtle Punch, how you doing? Okay, so yeah, Fire and Rocket, it looks like it's off, gonna be offline. Iron Hell Gunner is getting some big shots into the, um, War Hydra. Oh, the War Hydra does have, like, a fat HP pool. Also, passive regen, and it has the, another takes its place. That's a heal that procs when it gets below 50 HP. So yeah, this guy can really uh, tank a lot of damage. So yeah, very, very strong. Uh, otherwise, we got some infantry. We've got Dark Elf infantry is in mostly in here, looks like. Yep, they're all inundated in. Uh, some of them got routed off by the fire and rockets. But otherwise, I'm guessing this is the Ancestral Summon. Ancestral Summon right uh, beneath the um, War Hydra, so that's pretty nice. However, you do want to get your Shungan Gun Lord out of there. She is uh, does have a pretty large people when she's on foot. She's going to be taking a lot of damage here. Looks like we got a Pit of Shades going down these Halberds. Fantastic target for them. 
Yeah, unable to dodge, unfortunately, for the Cathay player. They're going to be taking some pretty hefty damage here. Yeah, that's a lot of work for them. Very, very good cast. Meanwhile, these Dark Shards are pretty uh, uncontested. They are getting a lot of shots in the Zaytank, who is getting his ass beat, unfortunately. Uh, very, very rough, getting put in cushion by those armor-piercing uh, shots. Not a good job, uh, situation for him. He's not having a good time. However, he has also been getting a lot of damage onto... Um, Onto Crone here on her big old chariot here. This is part of the reason why you don't really see her very often. She is a very large target and she takes a lot of damage from range, especially into very strong range factions like um, like Cafe. However, just uh, her dark shots do save her right at the last second, killing off Satang right before he's able to get that final shot that could have gotten her killed. She is routing, but maybe she will be able to come back. She does have pretty solid leadership. Otherwise, War Hydra unfortunately does not have very solid leadership. It's got almost half HP and also plenty of healing left to go. But uh, they are going to be routed off by these uh, spooky, spooky um, ethereal ancestral warriors with their... Uh, although, this guy's immune to fear and terror because he does fear and terror himself. He just routed off normally. But yeah, otherwise, uh, looks like um, the Dark Elves are taking an advantage in this game, though. The uh, Cathayan artillery has been uh, taken offline. Uh, looks like a lot of the crane gunners there are just like sort of in shambles back here. Not haven't been completely brought back online yet. Iron Hell Gunners as well, and also the Jake Warrior Crossbowmen. Um, they just came back from routing, so now uh, the Thay player needs to get them back online if they want to try to get back in this game. Rough spot for them, though. Um, looks like the Shadowcaster is just in here fighting against uh, Crane Gunners. Um, perfect place for her, really. She's disrupting an expensive uh, missile unit, while at the same time, they're not going to be able to do much damage to her, so it's not a threat. Pros of Kane, getting onto these Iron Hell Gunners, very nice for them. Uh, that's a fantastic target for them. They really want to get on them. Dark Shards, meanwhile, are hoping to clean up a lot of this Cathayan infantry. Their armor piercing is going to be fantastic, again, to those, um, those armored jade, jade warriors. Otherwise, Crone is back, and she's clearing out some of these uh, routing off uh, Cathay infantry jade warriors. Crane Gunners are back online now. They are getting some shots into them. The um, Iron Hell Gunners, in my opinion, I think you want to get them onto her, because they're going to have trouble shooting those bleak swords from behind the infantry. But uh, no trouble hitting that uh, big old uh, cauldron here. Meanwhile, she's just slowly rolling her way in here. Taking some shots on the last night back end of it, almost dead basically. But her leadership is doing okay, especially since charging she got buffed up. But those Iron Hills, I guess the player heard me in retrospect, um, uh, were able to get those shots on them and finally kill her off. So Cathay lost their big old uh, legendary hero Satang, but uh, Dark Elves have lost Crone Hellebron. However, it does look like it's gonna, not enough. Uh, too little, too late for Cathay. Uh, War Hydra is healthy, it got its heals off and passive healing, so it's almost heal capped. Medusa's pretty much completely untouched. She's doing just fine, and a lot of that Dark Shred line. Uh, looks like they are still online. Looks like you got one, two, and three still in good shape. Otherwise, yeah, because, yeah, Cathay, all their DPS, like, these Iron Hell Gunners are beat up, like, and also, they can't really get into range of anything they want to hit without them being getting shot back, and so the Dark Elves do take the victory. Very, very well done from the Dark Elf player, getting, first getting that, um, focus fire from the Dark Shards onto Satang, and, uh, getting those Harpies onto the, um, those Fire End Rockets. Uh, for, uh, Jay, for those, uh, Cathay, I think your initial deployment was really rough. I think, um, actually, here, let me go really quickly. Let me just load this back up just so I can see it. So yeah, I think from the start, you kind of set yourself up to have a rough day, a rough battle. And um, we'll get into it in just a second. As soon as it loads. But yeah, for the Dark Elves, I think the really big thing is, I do think Crone, you're better off. If you want to take Crone, I think you're better off taking her on her Manticore. She's decent, like, cycle charging infantry. She can still cause fear and terror because Manticore is a terror causing. And um, she's a little bit more survival because she's a smaller target and much more mobile. So, yeah, just in my opinion. But otherwise, most of this was fine. Also, Hydra's, um, normally it is it is very risky into uh, Dark uh, Cafe, but, you know, you were able to make it work. But anyway, focusing on this Cafe formation, I do think that you're setting, it, it's at a rough spot here, because you have these crane gunners, like, up front with nothing screening for them, and your uh, rockets are mostly up front with very little screening for them. With a build like this, where you're focusing on range, you want to go wide, you want to get your front line, like get the, like these Jade Warriors and stuff like that, up front with their shields, and you want to push them forward as much as you can. Especially because so much of his range was in the case of like Dark Shards, or um, the Bloodrack Medusa, both of which 125 range, all most of your stuff outranges them, right? Especially like your Crane Gunners, your Fire Rain Rockets outrange them pretty well. And uh, so if you get your, like, Jade Warriors and stuff like that, your Shield and Infantry, or your Peasant Spearmen, who, if they get shot, at the very least, they're really, really cheap. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you just get them up, like, push them up, so that way they're screening off these guys. So that way, in or if, you're, um, if your opponent wants to get these Dark Shards onto your range, like, especially Seitang here, because he was the one who got pincushioned, 
Um, they have to go through that Cathay front line, and Cathay front lines have incredibly cost-effective uh, holding infantry. Um, just incredible stats, so that can actually be kind of tough for the uh, Dark Elves to bunker bust through. Um, and the, the thing is, the Dark Elves, especially with this build, like they will need Crone and Hydra to get into melee into that front line to try to clear it out, um, which means that your guns, especially these Iron Hell Gunners, can now focus on those big monsters, right? So, yeah, getting these guys up front would be uh, really helpful. I also do think you should at least have, like, a couple cavalry units or, like, Crone, Auk, Onyx, Croman, some kind of mobility pieces to provide some pressure, especially since, like, you can then use them to pressure these guys. You can use them to screen off the enemy flyers from getting onto your artillery. Uh, you can get them onto their enemy archer line and stuff like that. You can also chase off routing units, like this Hydra, for example, which was routing out, you got routing off at, like, half HP. Uh, you could have chased them off as well if you had uh, more mobility presence. So stuff like that, I think, is something to uh, be uh, cognizant of for uh, these builds, this matchup. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, I think the Darko player, like, getting those uh, Dark Shards on them was really good. So yeah, so we got that. And uh, let me see, do we have any other matches incoming? I think we got another one here. All right, so we got uh, Surprise sent in his replay here. Can we, can we get it going? All right. Okay, so finally somebody took Eshin. All right, awesome. It was me, but yeah, I see that. Yeah, um, yeah. I think the formation especially was uh, the rough spot. Okay, so we got Dwarves into Norska. Pretty cool matchup. We also got Ungrim here. That's awesome to see. Uh, fantastic. Get the two red Battle of the Redheads. And... Uh, so we'll get into it. Um, we're gonna load in. Dwarves, in my opinion, are pretty solid into Norska. Their stuff is very resilient, and they also just have a lot of range pressure that they can bring against uh, Norska's pressure. But going into their armies, we got uh, Flame Cannons here, really awesome unit. Spent a lot of time out of the meta. However, with the buff to their range damage and their uh, reload speed, they are really, really solid at just clearing out infantry and stuff like that. Especially because a lot of times Norskin players will go like with like mask um, Norskin hunters, like with uh, axe doors or javelins or even even um, just to try to use them to whittle down like miners of blasting charges and stuff like that. And also the axe doors have those um, the um, shield breaker, so that can be good against that silver shield and infantry just to make them more uh, um, an easier target. So yeah, so flame cannons do really well against them. Um, also just really well against Norskin infantry in general. And uh, so yeah. Very good unit. We've also got, looks like, some Dwarf Warriors. We got Dwarf Warriors, Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons, Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons. Honestly, I'm not, I don't think Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons have much application in this matchup. I think if you're worried about stuff like Marauder Champions, I think your range is a better option for that. But yeah, we also got some Bugman's Rangers. I really like Bugman's Rangers. Um, incredible stats for what they are. Like they're basically like a hybrid infantry unit. They also have self-healing. They heal for themselves constantly. That's very nice. Uh, really good leadership. Uh, immune psychology as well. And also their damage from range is quite good. Uh, so yeah, really, really solid unit. Also got a couple of Dragonback Slayers on the flanks. One of them is the Dragonback Slayer. They got that um, power of the Dragonback thing. It's, um, it's a slow. Also imbues weakness to fire. Which, uh, if you can get the... Um, your flame cannons on whatever they're targeting, like especially infantry, that can be kind of nice for you. Also, Miner's Blasting Charge is just fantastic uh, chaff unit. One of the best chaff units in the game. Those Blasting Charges just do incredible work for you. And also, since they're dwarves, they basically are very resilient. Also got a Runesmith here. Runesmith, what does he bring? A Rune of Slowness and Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Not bad. Also, the Hammer of Karak Draz, which is a minus 40 melee attack uh, debuff for 50 second duration. That is actually quite nice. Um... And the Master Rune of Groth 1 This one's fine. Plus 8 leadership. Dwarves already have pretty solid leadership, so it's not too valuable, but um, you'll still take it, I guess. Now we got Ungrim Iron Fist, the Slayer King himself. He's got the Axe of Dargo here. Gives him a big fat bonus for large and armor piercing damage spike. He also himself is unbreakable and has Death Blow, of course. But yeah, just um, unfortunately a bit out of the meta because he does have trouble. He does have melee foot character problems where he has trouble dictating his engagements because he's so slow, but he's also a really cool character, so. Uh, who needs cost effect from this when you've got style? Just look at this guy. What a chad. Alright, so we've got, uh, that should be the dwarf army set up. We've also got Wolfric the Wanderer here. Very, very brave and aggressive on his, uh, approach here. Uh, he's got his, uh, he's got his boat here. And he's got his Hunter of Champions. Very nice single target deal buff, debuff for those duels. Also got a Shaman Sorcerer of Metal. Coming in with Searing Doom and Plague of Rust. Very, just regular spell kit. Nice and simple. 
He's also got, what is this, one and two trolls. We got any more, three and four trolls. We got some Marauders with great weapons for some armor piercing. Also got a bunch of some Marauder champions here. Looks like one, two, four Marauder champions here. So yeah, lots of metal, lots of armor, uh, lots of staying power. And also some, uh, looks like some Marauders on the front line. And uh, just one Norseman Warhound here for some mobile pressure. With that said, let's get this going. So yeah, the Flame Cannon doing some really good work right now. Just clearing out some of that infantry support. Um... Yeah, doing good work into them. Bugman's Ranger is getting some decent shots onto Wolfric. He is a like a horse character, so it's not too uh, too big of a target for them. I definitely do think that once they're able to, they should um, switch their shots onto like focus fire one of these Norse controls just to try to get routed off really quick. Yeah, blasting charges coming in, doing all right work into the Marauders. Looks like they were kind of split between Marauders and Norse controls or something like that. Very interesting. Uh, these ones did good work into these uh, Marauders, taking down the almost half HP really quickly. And uh, these Marauders also taking a bit of damage in the uh, on the approach. Uh, I definitely do think with these Slayers, you want to get them onto those uh, Norse, those uh, Trolls. That's definitely the perfect target for them. Um, otherwise, yeah, Ungram's in the fight here. I do think Ungram, really solid uh, boat coming in here. I do think the boat would have been better used on these Buglins Rangers, because they're just more of a threat to you than the uh, Dwarf Warriors. Otherwise, either that or get it onto one of these uh, um, miners really quickly just to make sure you get them down. Plague of Rust onto the miners. I don't think that's too necessary, especially since you got these trolls uh, up here. But yeah, either way, eh, you'll take it. Um, so yeah, one of these trolls routing off. Very good work from them. The Flame Cannon's uh, doing something like being able to route them off because they got that burn debuff, which is quite nice. But yeah, Slayer's coming in here to support. This is a fantastic engagement for them. Um, they're going to just be able to tear apart these Norskin uh, trolls if those trolls stay in combat with them. Otherwise, however, the uh, looks like the trolls tried to force pass through to shut down these um, flame cannons. They did for they have at least they're getting on them partially for a little while. However, now they are routing off here. Um, yeah, trolls are very fickle like that, unfortunately, with their very low leadership. Uh, Ungrim doing his best to try to get his engagements. However, not not going so great for them for him because Wolfric on horseback is able to just like just run away, basically. Uh, trying to get he's trying to get a good engagement onto this runesmith however the guy is on foot and he's surrounded by dwarf warriors so he is having trouble getting it and actually like hit onto him so yeah not great for him however Buckland's rangers now firing in on these marauder chain uh marauder great weapons just to try to uh, clear off for peel off for their fellow Buckland's rangers solid work here the flame cannon is coming in however they want to be careful because one of those shots did go into their Buckman, so not great but yeah now slayer's coming in here if you honestly, I think the Slayers, I think, don't worry about peeling these guys off. Or actually, now they're routing, so in my opinion, get these Slayers and now get them onto those trolls. That's the perfect engagement for them. If you want to chase, you can just get like these infantry. Oh, you got these two mighty brave Slayers here, 9 HP between the two of them, ready to do battle, uh, fulfill their Slayer Oath. And yeah, you got your archers firing off. You can get these miners, you can just get them like chasing after them to try to route, route them off. Otherwise, you're fine. Dogs, on the other hand, they're doing fine just chasing off these blasting charges. Um, you really want to just, like, get Cycle Charge with them at this point. Maybe Cycle Charge the bug from behind. Get some Gordon for them. Searing Doom, pretty solid. Dwarves do have that innate, uh, magic resistance, but a Searing Doom on the, a clumped up mass of infantry like that, pretty solid work. Yeah, this Dwarf Warrior, great weapons. Flame Cannons are compromised. They did get some good damage, though, it looks like. And, uh, how are we doing in this pocket? Um, some Marauder Champions, they're, they're good, but I don't know if it's gonna take them a little while just to get through all this armor, especially with Dwarf Leadership there, but, uh, eventually this flank is gonna fall, uh, fall down otherwise how are the dwarfs doing here okay so they got i think just they want to focus on these trolls just get them taken down i uh, just get rid of those as much as they can um so we got more trolls in here unfortunately the dwarves just yeah they did the dwarves so it's not like they have like cheap cavalry or something like that to chase off routing trolls so the trolls have come back are coming back they are going to be able to regenerate and um so yeah there's sort of rinse and repeat with them now the steering doom coming down this is going to get a very good contact as well that should good do good damage if they can't dodge yeah that's unfortunate yeah, really solid cast there from the uh, Norseman player. Very good work. And these Slayers, I think... These Slayers, I think you want to get them onto this uh, this engagement here. Otherwise, Wolfric is taking a decent amount of damage from those Dwarf Warrior Great Weapons. However, where is Ungrim? Ungrim, where are you, buddy? Here you go. So there's Ungrim here. He's doing his best. He's trying to get onto uh, Wolfric. But yeah, get a holy shit. Just chopping off this Marauder's uh, uh, Champion's head. Very good stuff. Uh, fantastic work from the Slayer King. Uh, otherwise, how are these Slayers the trolls doing? Again, they are stacked on the Slayers, so those Slayers will be perfectly fine to take this engagement. Solid work from them. Uh, Bugman's Rangers, looks like another Searing Doom come down here. So yeah, the, that Metal Shaman has been doing fantastic work here. Although it looks like getting still decent contact there, although the Dwarf player is able to dodge like maybe a solid like 40% of that damage. But yeah, so these Norsegan Warhounds are onto them. However, um, 
they're, they're not really getting like a clean charge, so it's not going to be too bad. However, these rangers are not shooting now because they're, they're tied down, which is not where you want them to be if you are the dwarves. So meanwhile, Wolfric is actually taking a bit of a whoop in here. Hold on, where's um, where's my man, my man Ungrim here? He's yeah, he's trying to get the fight in here. The Wolfric he's running away like a big old chicken, unfortunately. So um, yeah, if Wolfric can, uh, if um, Ungrim can get on him, how much more time? Okay, this is almost done. But if he can just get like one more hit, he might be able to route off Wolfric. Uh, do you have a rune of slowing available? If you can get that slow, that would be very, very clutch right now. But unfortunately, it looks like you're just a little bit too late on that, if you could have it. Otherwise, yeah, these rangers, I think, I worry that they're going to just be dragged down by superior numbers. Otherwise, because, yeah, they, yeah, they're surrounded by marauders and uh, warhounds. These slayer, these trolls are still in pretty good shape. These slayers are beat, too beat up right now. You got these slayers as well, but they're beat up as well. Marauder champions are going to be able to make really good... That's a, just a great trade for them. They're going to make short work of them. Wolfric, all he really has to do is just not get killed by Ungrim, which is really easy because Ungrim is only 32 speed. Look at this guy. Already is fighting Marauder Champions. He'll be able to do decent against him because he still just has really good more raw uh, melee attack. And um, But yeah, his bonus for large, fortunately, is not going to be able to help him here. One thing I will say is because Ungrim is unbreakable. Um, I'm trying to think, will he be able to... I don't think he'll be able to clear out all these infantry, especially since, like, those Marauder Champions are in good shape. These Marauder Champions still have 52 models. It's just like... And then these Trolls, like... They will strike... He is foot size, so they're not... The Trolls aren't going to get amazing contact onto him. And they are kind of beat up, but my main thing is just, like, is he just going to get army lost? But, yeah. Rune of Wrath and Rune coming in here. Not going to do amazing da amazing damage against the Trolls. This is better against, like, infantry targets. Like, you want to put these shit, in my opinion, just further notice... Um, onto this, like, right onto this clump of Marauder Champions. Fantastic target for Rune of Wrath and Rune. Just juicy, juicy target. These trolls are not so much. Um, yeah, you want to get it onto, like, clumps of infantry. Or, like, if cavalry's really bunched up, you can. But usually infantry, that's the most reliable, uh, target. What do we got? Plague of Rust coming in here. Uh, reducing that to 90 armor. Just help those Marauder Champions get their damage in. Otherwise, yeah, he's basically just gonna have to grind these down. Um, at this point... Yeah, you keep Wolfric away. Just keep him away, not even close to the battle. Honestly, just put him right there in the forest, or put him in the trees, or something like that. Just let, just grind down Ungrim. See, uh, what else are we doing? Where's the, uh, yeah, there's the caster. Hounds are right here. But yeah, and the dwarf player just throws in the towel. Um, fun matchup. Fun match. I think, um, similar thing here with the, uh, what I was talking with the Cathay player. I think you do want to have your flame cannons a bit further back, so that way your infantry can just screen for them a bit better. Another thing is, honestly, I don't think your Dwarf Warrior Grey Weapons are giving you anything in this battle. I know that, like, like against Marauder Champions, they're ostensibly supposed to go into them. The thing is, like, um... Okay, right, let me just go through the values really quickly. Slayers did really well. They got some good hits onto the... They got good engagements onto the trolls, so no surprise they did well. Flame Cannons did great. The Flame I really like the Flame Cannon. Probably my favorite unit on the Dwarf roster. It's just so cool. Them and Bugman's Rangers, probably my favorite units. Yeah, good work from the Bugman's Rangers. Just really rock-solid, reliable unit. They were actually tied down for a good chunk of the battle because, like, by the, uh, because the Norse can, like, swarm or whatever. But, um, they still got good work. Yeah, just fantastic unit. Yeah, really cool build, by the way. Four Slayers, four Marauder Champions, uh, two, uh, Bugman's Rangers, Flame Cannons. Just really awesome. Uh, Blasting Charges did all right. One of you guys paid for yourselves. But, yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, the, like, unfortunately with Ungrim, he's very, very cool. He's just, um, just, he's too slow. You can't get his engagements. Yeah, um, so that's the problem with, like, the dwarf melee characters. That's really why Thorek and the Rune Lord kind of dominate the meta, because they can at least project utility uh, beyond their themselves, so they don't have to rely on, they don't get uh, as hamstrung by their low speed. But yeah, Ungrim, unfortunately, is um, it works for the wear for that. Uh, going on to Norska, uh, decent work from uh, Wolfric. I think he's uh, his boats guy. He got some decent cows in the boats and did some okay work against the single entities. And more importantly, stayed alive to the late game. Didn't get himself killed. Uh, yeah, the Shaman got some good, uh, good damage here, even with the 35% spell resistance that the Dwarf units all have, uh, still getting good Searing Dooms onto them. Marauder Champions did really well in that infantry guard, just fantastic work. Um, especially when there's, like, four Slayers here, because Slayers and Marauder Champions really don't, Slayers really don't want to fight Marauder Champions, they're, like, the great unit for them, because their melee defense is relatively low, and they have, like, zero armor, so these guys will just, like, chop through them. Trolls did all right, an all right job. Uh, their big thing was basically, I guess, like, occupying a lot of the range and stuff like that. They just did all right. Just masses, just really solid in this game. And they were able to survive with that healing. 
Uh, Marauder Champion, this guy got nuked by the Flame Cannons. This guy actually did pretty solidly for himself. Just armor armor piercing into uh, Dwarves is uh, generally pretty solid if you can get, get them into the front line. Otherwise, uh, Marauders, they did decently for themselves. Just decently probably just fighting against like Slayers. Thing is, because also they'll be able to trade up in the Slayers pretty well for this, basically the same reasons I said for Marauder Champions. Light armor, relatively low melee defense. These guys have enough melee attack to actually get good work onto them. And the Warhounds... Good job from the Warhounds, getting some rear charges. I know they were chasing off some of the, one of those miners. Also, rear charges onto those Bugland Rangers are going to get you some good work here. So, otherwise, GG. So, one thing I wanted to just point out for the Dwarves in this matchup. Let's go, Dwarves. Uh, here's the problem with uh, Dwarf 40 Great Weapons. Their melee attack is dog shit. Like, they got nothing. 24 melee attack is just nothing. Especially because, like, the only, like, armored infantry the uh, Norskins would ever bring is going to be Marauder Champions, which, um, here we go. Uh, 53 melee defense. Like, your your Dwarf Warriors aren't going to do shit against them. So, I really don't think that these guys are a good pick in this matchup. I think if you want to, um, if you are worried about uh, range, you can either go, like, Rangers with um, Great Weapons, Throwing Axes, or whatever. Because um, they have their Throwing Axes. You can go Thunderers. Honestly, even though they, they do have, like, 80 armor. So, like, if you can even get, like, these guys Iron Tricks in here, that can do decent work against them. Or just, like, focus fire them with your Bugman's, Bugman's Rangers. That can also do good work. So, like, stuff like that, I think, is way better. Um, I also do think if you're worried about dealing with, like, large, you can also, like, Gyrocopters, Brimstone Guns are pretty good. Especially against Trolls, because they do flaming attacks. Trolls having regeneration or weak to fire. So, yeah, that's good work for them. You can also, because, like, you also don't rely, if you're trying to kill um, kill Wolfric on horseback, you don't have to rely on Ungram being able to catch this 90-speed uh, single-entity guy to take him down. You can just, like, follow him with these guys and keep pressuring them. Like, Norskins, they do have some range pressure, like, with with Manticores. And also, their own range can at least try to counter-fire up. The thing is, with the Dwarves, like, against a Manticore, you can just, like, play them defensively. Let your range deal with the Manticore. Especially, like, once you rampage the Manticore into Slayers or something like that. It's done. That Manticore is dead. So now, um, yeah. So I think Gyrocopters are good for here. Especially because also, like, if they use Skin Wolves, simply because they don't really have any other, like, ranged, uh, multi- uh, they don't have much other mult, um, mobile pressure. Skin wolves are something they sometimes take, like, one or two. Like, just as some kind of mobile pressure. But otherwise, yeah, pretty much all of, the, like, the large units have. Even if they go with, like, a, like a dragon. Like, if you're on a map with a tree line that they can use to protect the dragon, they can try to bring him in from the side, sneaky. This guy's good against them. I really do think brimstone guns are good, uh, solid on this matchup. But, yeah, and also, of course, they have the uh, bombs as well, which do good work, it's like, especially in the Marauder Champions. So yeah, um, I think that's really something to consider. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, GG's. Thanks for the uh, game. That was really fun. And let's uh, let's get you back here. Let's go. I think we got. Okay, it looks like we got another replay coming in here. I think we have two replays, which is perfectly nice. Let's get you saved. And uh, I think we got another one. Okay, so we got you. Let's go. Hiles versus Norska again. Okay. I guess we got another Hiles versus Norska match. It's going to be interesting. More double Phoenix Guard. I think Incars likes double Phoenix Guard. So yeah, Phoenix Guard. Uh, Phoenix Guard are a really cool unit. I think their problem right now is that like they have the elite Halberds problem. In the sense where our elite holding infantry problem. In the sense where like... They need you to stay on top. As far as their like key targets goes, they need those key targets to just stay on top of them. The problem is usually their key targets, being large, are usually able to just like avoid them because they're only infantry, right? Thirty-two speed, you know. Like they can't catch their targets, and they need their targets to come to them, which is just like okay, which you're not going to be able to. Um, so yeah, they're in a bit of a rough spot because of that, especially because like AOE magic and even like cheap range, even with the hundred armor and the thirty percent physical resistance, cheap range just with volume and fire can wear them out pretty well generally speaking they're just like you can avoid their damage pretty easily so yeah that's why you don't see them too often but they are a really cool unit look at these guys looking all majestic anyway so otherwise we got the uh, triple silver helms we got the uh, archmage of fire again flame sort of ruined burning head uh also a bunch of spears and uh, a bunch of archers here towns of torcolata provide that uh, fire damage and that flammable to synergize well with that archmage and uh yeah a bunch of love and sea guard as well and we got uh, one spearman here for good measure this guy's silver guard right and that guy's a spearman, yeah. So yeah, Silver and Guard, looking right here, looking very, very cool. I like these guys so much. 
Otherwise, let's take a look at the um, Norskin build. Wolfric the Wanderer got his uh, 100 champions and Sea Fangs. Uh, pretty simple kit, keeping it simple. We've also got Marauders, 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 Marauders. Got a couple Marauder Spears here. Also have a Shaman Sorcerer of Fire with Burning Head here, just keeping it simple again. Burning Head is going to be great against that, like, um, those are Archer Lines and those Spears as well. Not the Silver Guard or Phoenix Guard, but the uh, pretty much everything else. It'll be fantastic into them. Actually, not into the... Um, even Talons of Torquilato, with that 30% fire resistance burning head, will still do good work against them. But just get onto the Lothian Sea Guard, you should be fine. Also, we have one Skin Wolf, and one, two, and three uh, Norse Controls. And did I miss anything else? Also, we got one, two, three... Yeah, three Marauder Champions here. So, yeah. Uh, really solid build. Um, I think... Yeah, you have a lot of mobile pressure. The key thing is just making sure that mobile pressure comes in all at once and has its infantry buffering. Because, yeah, all of this stuff will be able to trade well in a vacuum against your, like, trolls and such. But, um, if you can just keep them, like, make sure they have infantry buffering when they come in, they'll do fine. Um, you also kind of want to have, like, protection for these, uh, like, your two skin wolves here. If you can get them, like, just move them over to get into the engagements on the silver helm, especially with the spearman support, they can do fantastic work. Yeah, otherwise, uh, let's see how we're doing here. So these ones, unfortunately, these trolls, they had got the short straw today. They're going to be getting focused off, so they're routing off first. They do still have 12 models, so they could os uh, ostensibly um, heal off and get that with that regeneration. So it might not be totally lost here, as long as you're able to keep your fire in here. So unfortunately, with this engagement, I think you have your skin wolves kind of stacked on top of each other. So they're not going to be able to get, like, clean engagement here. They, one of them still did really good work into this silver helm, but the other one... At least now it's finally getting onto this other silver helm, so that's good. That's good. But uh, yeah, and also the spearmen in here. This is a great. This is a great game. Two skin wolves, one spearman, and against like three silver helms is actually great for Norska. Otherwise, yeah, burning head down, doing really good work on these spears. Gonna do some solid work, poke onto these uh, log sea guard, even though they're returning a bit, and uh, they should be able to. Is it gonna go into these marauder? Marauder champions aren't gonna take too much damage from it, so you're not too worried too much there. Um. Actually, wait, it did uh, tickle the Silver uh, Phoenix Guard right at the end of it. That's very funny. So, yeah, Silver Helms are routed off. How are you, these trolls, doing? Trolls, honestly, just sit them back there until the late game. Let them heal up. And same ones with these ones. They took a lot of damage, but they have a good amount of models left. Like, 12 uh, models left? Pretty good. So, just save them for the late game. Just let them chill there. Silver Helms got a square engagement with the uh, Skin Wolves. Silver Helms will do solid damage into them because they're lightly armored, but those Skin Wolves will do fantastic work back. Especially now that you got a sandwich between two Skin Wolves. Yeah, these Silver Helms are not having a good day right now. I'm just getting torn to shreds. Otherwise, how's the High Elf Infantry going? The Spear Line is holding. The Phoenix Guard, of course, are holding just absolute sheds. Uh, the Archer Line is continuing the fire. They are getting good shots into these Skin Wolves, um, wearing them down pretty well. So that's nice for them. Uh, honestly, with these Silver Helms, I think you want to pull them back to the center and just play them defensively. So that way, if the Skin Wolves do get an engagement onto them, they're going to be doing it on top of your own Spears. Otherwise, yeah, you're just asking for trouble with them. Uh, so Wolfric is getting onto this Archmage, which isn't great for him. Hunter of Champions is setting her up right for the picking. However, Wolfric is stopped up by just this handful of Logan Sea Guards. Um, yeah, horse character problems definitely going to come into play here. However, these other Silver Guard are coming in for support. That is very nice for them. Another Burning Head comes down here. Does good work onto the Silver uh, Logan Sea Guard. Uh, decent work onto the uh, Phoenix Guard. And um, sh actually should be routing off this last Logan Sea Guard here. That burnt uh, leadership debuff is going to be really pushing them over edge, I think. Yeah, now that Burning Head still goes into those these spears all the way on the other side. Fantastic spells. Burning Head's just such a good spell here. Just really good infantry clearing. So yeah, Trolls coming in here on the flank. If you are going to bring them in, yeah, this is, like, fine. Bring them on this edge here so now they can collapse in with this infantry support onto these, um, Lodge and Sea Guard. That's perfectly fine. Archer is off firing into these Skin Wolves. They will be getting really, oh, really good damage. God damn. Uh, Talons of Torque Lead in the particular, imbuing that fire, doing fire damage and imbuing that flame pool. Uh, really good work against the Skin Wolves, who, by the way, are weak to fire in case I forget to mention, because that regeneration gave them that 20% fire weakness. So, yeah, um, fantastic work. So, yeah, those Skin Wolves, these ones, guys, are beat to hell. These ones are basically, I'm surprised they haven't shattered yet, but, yeah, they're dead. These guys are done, too. Only one model left, so regen is not going to help you there. So, yeah, fantastic work for them. So, as far as the Skin Wolves, they routed off. However, still, you lost a lot of your Silver Helms in the process. So, you have one and uh, one beat up, two really beat up. Silver Helms, about third HP left. For actually, it looks like a fifth HP left for this one. We're getting another Burning Head here. Okay, yeah, it's another Burning Head here. We got two Burning Head casters, so there's Burning Heads all over the place. So yeah, Burning Head onto these Marauder Spearmen, clearing their mob, which is uh, you know nice. You want to take out that infantry support. Silver Helm rear charge here actually should be able to route these guys off. They still have that burn leadership debuff from the Burning Head, so yeah. Um, 
Or is their leadership going to stabilize? Oh, good for them. Yeah, so their leadership stabilized. You want to pull the silver arms out just to keep cycle charging. Uh, Tons of Trocolita. Getting those shots off onto those trolls. Actually, right now, do the... The guy doesn't really have anything to pressure them. So, honestly, if you just, like, uh, have these uh, reset your uh, archer line over to there, uh, like, back here, almost, like, sort of flip the flip the formations, you can just have a really nice concave of fire here onto these uh, trolls. So, yeah, are they... Do they have anything that can chase off the trolls? Not really. The skin of the silver homes are stuck here. Was there another silver home? Where's the other one? So this one is here. So, if you can get the silver home onto these guys and then turn your archers to shoot at the, uh, the trolls here, over here, try to chase off your spears, you can actually do pretty solid work here. Um, yeah, and these uh, Logan Street Guard, I really do think, like, you can try to get them to, um, like, a free form your ranks and get them firing onto these other trolls. So, that can be fantastic work for you. I'm sort of ruined down onto these guys, a uh, Phoenix Guard. Um, I think it's also getting onto these... Ah, oh, you missed the Logan Street Guard. That's unfortunate. But, yeah, I think... You should be getting them routed off. Yeah, so this is actually a really good get for them. Um, yeah, so they shattered those trolls. And yeah, looks like uh, Wolfric all on his own. The uh, Norskins throwing the towel. So yeah, really good work there from the Hyle player. Uh, burning heads got all over the place, so your infantry is definitely in trouble. So yeah, Marauder, uh, Marauder Champions, none of them paid for themselves. Marauders, none of them paid for themselves. Marauder Spears, one of them, almost, I think these guys are 500, so almost paid for themselves. Oh, the Phoenix Guard absolutely uh, handled this like champs. They did have a lot of really good targets here. Wolfric, uh, three trolls, and also two skin wolves. Just fantastic. Um, great situation for them. They're, they'll take that any day. Uh, Archmage almost paid for herself on horseback. She is really cheap. But that 12,000 damage dealt value is really nice. 10,000 for the um, the Shaman. Yeah, this is a great matchup if you've got Burning Head. Or a great... Uh, uh, these two builds are great if you've got Burning Head. Silver, Silver and Guard here did a good job holding. Um... Lawton Seaguard looks like got really good damage. My god. Yeah, this archer line did fantastic. This one was the only one that got uh, pushed down, but the rest of them combined just for fantastic value. And these spears, like their job is to hold. Silver Helms, they had a rough early engagement, but like at least enough of them survived to the late game to be able to chase off of some trolls and stuff like that. So that was pretty good. And um yeah, your skin wolf did alright work. I do think like that initial engagement kind of hurts you when you stack them on top of each other. If you can just get it to like one went on one silver home and then the other went on the other silver home, I think that could have been uh, much more decisive in your favor. Otherwise, yeah, trolls. It, it, this is a tough matchup for trolls into high elves, uh, specifically because um, they just have so much range to bring to bear and there's so much spears and stuff like that. So yeah, that can be a bit tough for them. But otherwise, um, like sea fangs and um, burning heads are fantastic. And otherwise, yeah, I think overall the build is pretty solid. Just yeah. Maybe, like, you may want to have, like, instead of, like, the trolls, you may want to pair them with more, um, like, actually, I'm trying to think. With the trolls, you might be good with the trolls, maybe dropping one of these trolls and getting some dogs. Maybe one of these trolls and maybe, like, one of your infantry units, uh, one of your marauders, um, and getting some dogs just to provide some additional mobile pressure to help make sure you chase off, like, stuff like the silver homes and also make it easier for you to get, like, rear charges and stuff onto, like, these bar these archers so that way they're disrupted and they can't just pin cushion your trolls. So I think stuff like that would be um, a little bit better in terms of trying to max this build. But otherwise, uh, GG's to everyone. Thanks for the game. And uh, do I have another replay sent in here? Looks like, yep. Looks like we got another replay. Which gets you saved. Alright, so now we're on to our next matchup. Looks like we've got Dwarves against Nurgle. Should be a classic matchup, should be fun. So okay, we got the peak gate guard, that's awesome. Let me get chat up here. Hmm. So yeah, this is an interesting interesting battle. Um, one thing that really does help uh, hurt Nurgle here is that uh, dwarves just have really, just really good range. They can bring a ton of range here. So yeah, Nurgle can kind of struggle here because a lot of their like key like damage pieces do struggle against um, all that uh, like mass range and dwarves can be mass range, like, like it's no one's business. So, for the dwarves here, we've got, looks like, one slayer here, just for a bit of protection on that back line. We've got some dwarf cannons here. Uh, we've got one, looks like one thunderer. Yeah, one thunderer. We've got pig gate guard here. These guys are really cool. Look at these guys. This is the ROR hammer unit. Their big thing is they got armor sundering attacks, which aren't too pertinent. Magic attacks, which is nice for the dwarves, because they don't have actually that many sources of magic damage. So that's nice for them. Immunopsychology as well, but also their leadership is just so good. Like, base 90 leadership and immunopsychology, fantastic stuff. So, yeah, really, really solid. Um, their main downside for them is if, like, the door, the Nurgle, like, they have 
plenty of mortise engines available, so that can actually be really rough for them. But um, if you can take out the mortise engine with your range, then you're in good shape. Otherwise, we got a bunch of blasting charge and minus blasting charges here. Bunch of dwarf warriors. Looks like one of them's a long beard. And we got uh, one, two coralers here. That's crossbows. Also, iron drakes with the troll hammer torpedoes. Really, really good into any large stuff, especially big old monsters. And uh, we've got iron drakes, the flamethrower variant. My main concern here is that the formation is just too tight. Because especially a lot of the stuff is like, um, a lot of your range is stuff that kind of needs, the troll hammer torpedoes are a little bit better off, but um, Thunderers and uh, Iron Drakes, they're like direct fire infantry units, so that I'm, I'm worried that they're going to struggle to get like, actual line of sight here, um, especially onto some of the infantry here, especially since they also brought Festus, who's a foot character, so it's going to be hard for you to get your shots on them. But um, otherwise, for your leadership, you got Thoric Ironbrow on foot with his peak gate guard here. He has brought, what is it, we got Rune Negation, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, Rune of Speed, so yeah, some decent buffs and uh, damage output there. Forge Fire, minus 15 armor, I don't really think you need it much here, to be honest. Like, Forge Fire, um, because, like, the only thing here that doesn't do armor piercing is, like, Quarrelers and uh, Iron Drakes, but honestly, I think their damage output's fine. So yeah, I don't think, I don't think you need Forge Fire, I don't think you need, um, Thoric's Rune Armor. Honestly, if you get rid of those, you can save yourself some money and maybe beef it up uh, your roster elsewhere. But otherwise, yeah, Thoric is still strong lord. Very durable, very so good support. Uh, yeah, really, really strong. That Rune of Firth and Home in particular is really nice. Gives you that uh, perfect vigor aura. Uh, what do we got? We got for Nurgle, we got a bunch of Marauders in Nurgle. Exalted Plague Bearers in Nurgle. These guys, so if they can get their grenades off onto the Dwarf Infantry, especially that Peak Gate Guard, fantastic value there. Otherwise, they're just a really, um, just incredibly durable Elite Infantry unit. Um, unfortunately, they are lightly armored, so dwarves, if they can get, like, blasting charges, quarrelers, iron tricks onto them, they're gonna have for a really, uh, be in for a really rough, rough time. Otherwise, for mobility, we got, let's say, one Chaos Knight. We've got uh, a couple Plague Toads and Nurgle here for that armor-piercing anti-infantry. We got Rod Flies here. Light, light armor, lots of armor, uh, really good armor-piercing value. Um, uh, high, uh, very mobile, pretty rare for Nurgle, but, um... So yeah, if you're of them, you really want to be careful because if the dwarves have a lot of uh, range assets, that can really do a lot of work to them. But otherwise, we got the Exalted Hero of Nurgle on foot. Uh, really good armor piercing values, good combat stats, pretty tanky. We also have Festus, the least jeweler. Look at this guy. Look at that double chin. Powerful stuff. Uh, he's coming in here. He's got his, um, for spells, he's got, uh, what's it called? Well, so his big thing is he has like this, like basically a more, an AoE effect that's like toggleable. So one can either be a constant heal and another one can be a Mortis Engine. So you basically switch between those at your leisure. He also has this um, Pestilent Potions. That's a, basically just a DPS debuff on whatever he hits hits with it. Also, Rancid Visitations here. I'm assuming he's just going to be casting that onto uh, Thoric the whole game. Or he's got Fleshy Abundance here to try to heal up. He's probably going to be trying to heal up those Chaos Knights in particular. But um, the Exalted Hero could be like a target for it as well. Or maybe the Rot Flies. Probably the Rot Flies, though. They kind of die really quickly, especially with that demonic instability crumbling. That stuff is just really rough. Also got a beast of Nurgle here, the jolly, deadly giant here himself. Lenny in the flesh, or basically Lenny as a monster. Um, yeah, God, look at this guy. This guy's spooky. Yeah, unfortunately, he's actually kind of dog shit in the current meta. Like, you barely ever see him taken because he's just not that good. Yeah, but if you play Dark Tide, this guy's a fucking menace. Anyway, uh, poison attacks, magic damage. He has armor piercing, but yeah, his combat stats aren't great. And uh, he is weak to fire, of course. And uh, Slime Trail is okay. Decent debuff. Reduces speed by a little bit. And melee attack, I guess, is nice. But otherwise, not too much. And yeah, I cast all those plate builds already. So with that said, let's get this going. Cannon Fire, it should be coming in by now. Looks like they're focusing on those Rock Flies. Solid target. The sooner you can get those guys bursted down. Um, because of Demonic Instability Crumbling, you can just get them taken out really quickly. That can do good work for you. Um... I really think, yeah, you're getting your Slayers out on the side. Just want to be cognizant of these, this mobility pressure here. Make sure they don't flank you around. Otherwise, your Quarrelers. I think I think you really do want to focus your fire onto these uh, Exalted Plague Bearers and Nurgle. As soon as you can get hits into them, that's like, that, there, right there. That's your big target. Iron Drakes, on the other hand, are going to be able to... In my opinion, like, if you can move your Iron Drakes up to here, because they can have firing lanes up to here and here, that can be much better for them. Um, so, yeah. Looks like they're going to get a really good shot. And look at this damage. Okay, massive damage incoming from those flamethrowers. Just incredible value. I love Iron Drake. Such a cool unit. Uh, easily one of my favorite on this roster. Just one of the coolest rangers. Now Blasting Charges. Okay, these Marauders are just not having a good day here. Bla Iron Flamethrowers and Blasting Charges coming in here. They're going to be routing off any second now. Oh uh, yeah, just fantastic work here. Now, if I'm the Dwarf player, now you can just turn them around and get them firing onto these ones. And you've got a stew going. Uh, blasting Charges into these Plague Bearers. Doing some solid work here. 
Uh, right now, they, all they can really hit are these Dwarf Warriors, which aren't that important for you. So yeah, as long as you just keep getting these Quarrelers shooting into them, um, in my opinion, you want to get also these Thunderers. You can get a firing line, like right here, right down the pipe down there. You can get a decent firing line, uh, get some good work onto them. Meanwhile, your cannons are shooting into these Chaos Knights, getting some good work into them. Very nice. Your Iron Drake's Troll Hammer with the Troll Hammer Torpedoes, you just want to get them shooting at the, probably the Beast of Nurgle, I think. Um... However, if I was the uh, dwarf right now, I would be getting, because these blasting charges have already spent their ammunition, just like move them out here on this flank so that way you force the dwarf, um, uh, Nurgle to either try to punch through them or go around them, which buys you more time. And you can move maneuver your slayers back here to get some uh, more cover just to keep your ranged assets more covered. Meanwhile, Plague Toad's coming in here. Uh, they're going to have a rough time of it now, though, because you have miners and the uh, Peak Gate Guard ready to come in here and just take them out, screen them out. So yeah, fantastic work for them. Otherwise, these Iron Drakes. Yeah, get really good da good damage on those Plague Toads. Even though they're more of an anti-infantry unit, they'll still do great work against something like all the big stuff like the Plague Toads. In my opinion, okay, so Festus was able to disrupt them. I think you really want to get them like in guard mode or something like that to take them out. However, what this means is now you can get, uh, what's his face? Your, um, like, Peak Gate Guard, just peel them onto them and let your miners just cover for these guys. So, yeah. Because, yeah, if you can get Peak Gate Guard surrounding them, that can be good work. Although, actually, I forgot about the Mortis Engine thing. Just get your single entities onto him. Uh, Thora can actually beat up uh, uh, the Festus pretty well. Okay, so Plague Drones are actually onto their ideal target, these Thunderers. It's really good work for them. But, yeah, now the Dwarf Range, you can just turn around, get that fire onto them. How's that going to do? Really? Oh, my God. Disgusting damage onto these Rot Flies. They're going to be crumbling, right? You already got the crumbling over here. They're just done. Deleted. One volley, just bye-bye. Uh, yeah, fantastic work from them, covering for their buddies. So now, Troll Hammers, you got your Plague Totes, you got your Beast of Nurgle here. You are, uh, you've uh, got plenty of choices available for you. And your Flamethrowers as well. Honestly, I would just shoot them into, what would you shoot them into? Just shoot them into those Plague Totes just to get them rounding off immediately. Or, not rounding off, actually crumbling. Or you can just target them all in the Festus and actually do really good damage. Because, uh, I don't know, downsides of being a big fat guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was just fantastic work. These Iron Drakes are just doing really great. So yeah, he's rounding off. Um, for some reason I forget that he's not a demon, so he doesn't run off. So yeah, great work from, um, the, uh, the dwarves. Fantastic. So I think my early concerns of them not being able to get line of sight were clearly unfounded, and they actually did fantastically. The Iron Drakes, excellent value here. 10,000 HP damage dealt, 1,000 damage dealt as gold value. Really good work from them. Where are our troll hammer torpedoes? So not that as much value as I would have thought. Maybe they just couldn't get their shots off in the beginning. But yeah, the way they peeled off those rock flies, though, was just fantastic. Look at these poor guys. Because yeah, they got shot from the cannons in the beginning, by the cannons from the beginning, who themselves got great value, my god. But um, yeah, the troll hammers getting onto those uh, rock flies at the end, just really rough for them. Not their finest uh, finest day. Uh, Thorak did a fine job here. He's not super DPS, especially on foot, but um, yeah, very tanky, good support as well. PK card, ultimate, honestly, they just didn't really have a chance to get many engagements here, because the range was doing a perfectly fine job. Handling things. Thane does the Thane things. He's just perfectly fine. Uh, just a really cheap uh, anchor piece. Very, very solid hero. Slayers didn't really get too many engagements onto the stuff they like, but, I mean, they were pretty healthy into the game, so it's solid for them. Thunderers did solid work. The um, Dwarf Infantry did a solid job holding. Miners Blasting Charges. Solid, decent work. Uh, just getting damage into the Nurgle units. Uh, your Quarrelers, on the other hand, did a pretty solid job just peppering the uh, lightly armored um, Nurgle Large. Festus, he did okay. Didn't get a chance to do too much value. Uh, your Exalted Hero, unfortunately, wasn't able to do, uh, uh, didn't do so hot. Your Chaos Knights, I don't, I think they just struggled to find a place, uh, a good spot, uh, a home, especially because there's all this, like, range pressure, like, the cannons got to work onto them, and, uh, yeah, you still have the Thunders and stuff to worry about. Beast of Nurgle, yeah, I just don't think this guy does enough damage. Uh, he's just not great. And plus, he's a, he's big enough where, like, he doesn't get protected by infantry from range, um, so, yeah, he just gets shot too easily. And, um, your Plague Bearers, unfortunately, like, when you just have one of them, and then not as much pressure to shut down the enemy range pieces, um, they're just gonna get zeroed in and just killed really quickly. They got good damage, but most of that damage is on to stuff like Dwarf Warriors, so, not great. Um, so yeah, Chaos Warriors, unfortunately, just can get, uh, their, their good engagements as well. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, like, there just isn't much here to, like, to harass or bog down the range pressure, so the range would just be able to just clear off a lot of your assets. Especially your Marauders. Your Marauders got cleared off really quick. But yeah, so for Nurgle, I think your best bet here is to try to... You can either do like a soul, like double Soul Grinder kite because they have like the mortar things from their arms. So you can get maybe some decent work from them. Or um, 
like go like with as many mobile assets like a bunch of furies and a bunch of stuff like that and just try to like just bog down the range and then just grind them down but otherwise yeah this is a tough matchup for you um nurgle into dwarves is a pretty tough spot nurgle themselves are just in a tough spot basically anything that's good at dealing with like a heal blob um is going to be good into nurgle because nurgle that's kind of all they've got so yeah otherwise but yeah fun matchup thanks thank you for sending that in next we got i think that was uh we saw you okay yeah so this is our next one dwarves again dwarves against chaos dwarves we got a nice grudge match here For the Chaos Dwarves, looks like we've got, uh, I think it's just like a generic uh, Demon Caster. Got the Demon's Tongue though, that's the R1, that's the tank that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, did I get sent in another replay? Let's take a look, yep. Let me just get this replay sent while we're loading in. Cut it. Let's get you dropped out. Hey, looks like I got another one. Another replay, let's get you paused really quick, sorry about that everyone. Okay, we should be good. So I'll get you in slow motion just so I have time. So with the dwarves here, we've got, it looks like a bunch of dwarf warriors here. We've got one and two and three thunderers here. Thunderers are just a really solid source of mid-range armor-piercing damage. Also got an organ gun. Organ guns are so cool. Look at these guys. Quad quadruple barrels here, ready to deliver some pretty hefty uh, armor-piercing damage. Yeah, really, really strong. Good into infantry and stuff like that. I find they're really good. So like, actually, yeah, these infernal iron guard might have some trouble. But, um, so yeah, we also got Giant Slayers. Giant Slayers, really, really cool. Those big old double axes here. Fantastic. This huge damage out. But 30 charge bonus, 50 armor piercing, uh, majority armor piercing damage, 30 bonus versus large. Anything big gets onto them, they will just do incredible work against. Um, also, we got, looks like, one and two more Slayers here. A couple more Slayers on the flanks. Also got Hammers here. Another really cool unit here. Like, one thing I like about the new player tournaments is they bring in a lot of the fun stuff. See, so, yeah, Hammers are really sick. Uh, and for our leadership, we've got Ungermire and Fist again. Look at this guy, Slayer King, coming in here, ready to fulfill his oath. Um, he's got Deadly Onslaught and Axe of Dargo here, just a big old damage spike that's going to be nice for him. If he can get onto his big targets, he can do fantastic work for you. Unfortunately, the key word there is if. And we also have a Runesmith here, coming in with the um, Hammer of Karak Draz. Very strong uh, uh, damage DPS debuff. Also got a Rune of Slowness and a Rune of Speed. Uh, just really solid buff and debuff spells for you, especially that debuff, that room of slowness. Just good for setting up something like the uh, Sorcerer Prophet on his big old Taurus here. Uh, good for setting him up for those like Thunderers to zero in on. So with the uh, for the Chaos Dwarves, our leadership here, Sorcerer Prophet of Fire. What does he got? He's got Cascading Fire Cloak and Burning Head here. He also has the uh, where does he have it? He's also got Blazing Body coming in with his Taurus mount. He also has the Chalice of Blood and Darkness. However, this is actually. Wait, I actually have to test this, because I don't know if this actually works, works with the uh, Runesmith cast. If it works with the Runesmith cast, then fine. But if it doesn't work with them, then actually this is unfortunate, because you're not going to get that heal. Um, but otherwise, we got uh, looks like a bunch of chaff. Got a mix of Orc Laborers, Goblin Laborers in here as well. Just chaff units. Their job is to die. We also got the Iron Demon. The Demon Song, excuse me. This is the Iron Demon ROR here. They got uh, really good. They're decently mobile. Really durable here, especially since they're unbreakable. They also got some good armor uh, anti-infantry. Good, really good against armored infantry. And that shot also does a burnt effect. There's a minus eight leadership. Pretty solid debuff here. Uh, when you're against dwarves, you really want to take whatever leadership debuffs you can get uh, just to get those guys routed off. We also have, uh, looks like, one and two Infernal Guards of Fireglaives just delivering that um, well-armored, pretty tanky themselves. Decent combat sets, but also that long, uh, medium-range armor-piercing damage is really, really solid. So if they can get onto their good targets, they can do some really good work for you. We also have some Chaos Dwarf Warriors here, just providing a decent um, uh, uh, infantry unit with some decent staying power with the Silver Shields and that 85 armor. We also have Bull Centaur Renders with Great Weapons. That's interesting. The Great Weapon version, I, this might be a mistake, because the Great Weapon version has bonus versus large. And so you're against Dwarves. Dwarves don't really have large, other than Thoric with his, um, on his Throne of Doom thingy. But honestly, if you're taking Iron Glaives, Iron Fire Glaives, I don't think you need that. So yeah, I really do, yeah, this might be a bit of a mistake. In my opinion, the um, the shielded variant or the double axe variant will probably do well for you. And also, of course, we have the Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders. That's just as a mobile piece. Good for um, just diving onto the, uh, like, the, if, like if you can get a rear charge onto this uh, stuff. So what you want to do, usually when you have these two cheap mobile units against dwarves, is try to force the slayers to commit to the front line or like a flank or something like that. And then once they move in, then you dive in with your cheap mass to disrupt the uh, range. So, with that said, let's get this going and see how this goes. So, the iron working guns, what are you guys shooting at? 
So yeah, they should get some good damage onto these guys. Let's take a look. How you guys doing? Okay, so you're missing a bunch of your shots. However, the ones that do hit are doing decent damage. Okay, seriously? You just missed like 80% of your shots. What are you guys doing? Anyway, so that's not great. But in my opinion, okay, so they should be able to get some good damage. See, now they're starting to hit more. Okay, so that's a bit better. So yeah, decent work for them. Um, although, in my opinion, I think you really want to push up with these Dwarf Warriors to try to provide some screening. Otherwise, they're just going to be able to shoot them, and then the Organ Gun crew is going to die really, really fast. So yeah, I think in this case, it's a mistake to not uh, push up with your Dwarf Warriors and your Longbeards. Just get them on, especially because even against Chaff, they're going to do good work against them. Uh, Bull Centaur is taking some shots from the Thunderers. Not great for them, but... Um, meanwhile, yeah, your Sorcerer Prophet is taking some good damage from the Thunderers. Yeah, pretty solid work here. Wolf Riders were able to get in here onto these Thunderers. However, the Giant Slayer should be getting activated. Should be able to peel them off. However, this is really nice for them because now they are doing some really strong disruption for you. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, like, look at this. There's, like, no space between your stuff, your, um, your DPS and your infantry. So, yeah, you really want to push up, in my opinion. Otherwise, so, yeah, these Wolf Riders, they just got completely just collapsed by these Giant Slayers. Fantastic work for them. Burning Head coming down here. However, I don't think it's going to do much against his Longbeards. 100 armor and 35% missile uh, spell resistance. Like, yeah, just tickles the pickle, but really not that much damage here. And unfortunately, nukes your own. <laughs> you nuke your own orc laborers here. So yeah, your chaff is going to be routed off. Um, so both central renders, they did get onto the thund thunderers. Did some solid work against them. They're taking a lot of damage. However, uh, these slayers are now onto you with your light 50 armor. Uh, they're going to do fantastic work into you. I really think that if you're these um, bull central renders. Ooh, giant slayers are coming in too. That is gonna, they are gonna do some incredible work against you. These guys are not having a good time right now. Uh, yeah, so that's gonna be rough for you. Um, in my opinion, let's see. So now the Oregon Guns should be back online. Uh, however, now, now that those slayers have committed, I think this, uh, Iron Demon really needs to get aggressive and get active. Start, like, now push through, and push through, get onto the, um, get onto those Thunderers, cycle around, push through onto these Dwarf Warriors, cycle, uh, rear charge these hammers, stuff like that. You really do want to be active with these uh, uh, these tanks, because that's basically what they are. They're a chariot. You want to keep them moving. Keep them charging, and they'll do incredible work for you, especially since, like, so much of these Slayers are, like, bogged down here. So, in my opinion, for the Dwarf player, I think it would be better if you just pull those Slayers back to that mid, the mid, uh, middle engagement. Um, ooh, actually, Burning Head here, really solid cast here. Even with that spell resistance, that uh, zero armor is going to be rough for those... Um, you are going to get some solid damage here against these clumped up units. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely do think, yeah, you want to keep these Slayers back. You're getting these ones back into the middle engagement, so fantastic. Um, unfortunately, yeah, like I said, you want to keep this guy active, because he's been in combat with Ungrim, and, like, look at that damage output. Just incredible. And so, yeah, he's beat the brakes off this Demon's Tongue. So, yeah, fantastic work for him. Should be just one more hit left, and then... One more hit. Boom. Done. Uh, yeah, good work from Ungrim. Fantastic work. Slayer King, uh, doing what he does. Um, so yeah, Thunder is trading into these Fire Glaives in a vacuum. They will do better. Um, also, I don't think I actually with Kindle Flame casting Cascading Fire Cloak onto them actually is fine because it does beef up their damage with Kindle Flame. However, I do think in this situation you want to target uh, your Thunderers instead of Ungrim because that's the biggest threat to you at this point. Because Ungrim, even if he chases you, you can just run away from him, or you can just get chaffed and bog him down. But yeah, these Thunderers you want to you want to keep shooting on them. Otherwise, you got Slayers onto those Infernal Guard. That is unfortunate because that's going to be tough to peel. Um, since they are unbreakable, so you got to just like deal with them all, all, like entirely. Chaos Dwarf Warriors and these Dwarf Warriors are in a wet noodle contest. They're two holding infantry fighting each other. They're going to be in the it for a long time. Burning Head um, does okay damage. Yeah, not too much against Dwarf Infantry. Um, unfortunately, it goes like it seems like it just really didn't want it to. Oh, holy, look at that. Look at that turn. Just goes like completely like 45 degrees off to the right. Really did not want to touch those giant slayers. Very unfortunate cast for the um, uh, Chaos Dwarf player. And unfortunately, yeah, see those Thunderers were able to get these uh, the Sorcerer Prophet chased off here. He is routed. Very unfortunate for the Chaos Dwarf player. And the Dwarves are taking a lead in this balance of power. And that definitely does look to be the case. Otherwise, what damage output? Yeah, like there are only DPSs in these Fire Glaives. Which, uh, looking at all this stuff here, I just don't think they have enough to deal with it. Uh, especially because these Thunderers, like, they don't have any pressure pieces to um, shut down these Thunderers. So the Thunderers and this working Gun are just, they're free to shoot. So yeah, um, I think it's just a matter of time. Especially Giant Slayers, they'll do good work. These guys aren't large, but they still have just, like, 49 minute attacks. They'll do fantastic. And the uh, Chaos Dwarf, or Chaos Dwarf player throws in the towel. And the Dwarves take the day. So, the Grudge, uh, I'm sure the Grudge has not settled quite just yet here, but this did maybe put a dent into it. 
So for the dwarves, uh, Ungram did some solid work here. Most of that's going to be into the demon's tongue. So yeah, fantastic work for him. Uh, Hammer is also 11,000 damage dealt. Yeah, really good stuff. Just clearing out a lot of that uh, Chaos Dwarf infantry. Oregon Guns did solid work here. Um, that's some pretty decent. They didn't pay for themselves, but you'll still take that. Um, in my opinion, again, I think if you had just pushed up with your Dwarf Warriors, the, this Oregon Gun would have done even better. Because that way you can um, screen for it and he can get more shots off before you get uh, bogged down by like the... Um, What's it called? The uh, Hobgoblins and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just think, um, yeah, just screening for your uh, your range is just a really, really useful uh, tech. Especially with Dwarf Warriors and stuff like that, because they're just really hard to dislodge. So, it just makes it so, um, just way, uh, just a nice quality of life for your uh, your ranged assets. However, Thunder still did really well. Over 800 gold for each of them. All of them more than paying for themselves. Fantastic work into the Sorcerer Prophet and also the Fire Glaives. Uh, really good stuff. Slayers also did really, really well, like all these Slayers. The Giant Slayers didn't pay for themselves, but, you know, they were healthy by the late game, so you'll still take it. Otherwise, yeah, these Slayers did really well. These are the ones that got onto the Bull Centaurs, I think. And, yeah, that's another thing. The Bull Centaur, great weapons. I really don't think that's a mistake to take them into Dwarves. Uh, you want to go for the Infantry variant or the Shielded variant. Um, but, yeah, because their bonus was large, just completely wasted. Uh, otherwise, yeah, the Holding Infantry, their job's to hold, not really deal damage. Um, otherwise, your chaff, your chaff is your chaff for the Chaos Dwarves, so they're not going to do much for you. The Wolf Raiders, they got, like, okay disruption on, and just unfortunately the Chaos Dwarves weren't able to take advantage of it. Your Demon's Tongue still got, uh, some good damage out, considering that it kind of got, um, unfortunately stuck in combat with, uh, Ungrim, which, not great for them, but yeah, if you can keep that thing moving, it'll get great work for you. Especially because the Dwarves didn't really, like, when the Dwarves had committed two of their Slayers into, like, the far right flank, um, your uh, your demon's tongue really did have a lot of free reign, a free space to just cycle charge the enemy infantry, especially these hammers and stuff like that and the thunderers. So I think yeah, you do want to keep active with them. So I think those are, those are two of your big mistakes. Um, otherwise, your fire glaives actually did do good damage here because they just got a lot of shots off to last until the end. But yeah, your sorcerer prophet was in an unfortunate spot. I really don't think burning head is a good pick for um this matchup. I think you probably want to go just like lord metal. Use your plague of um. Lore of Metal. It's like, even just spamming Searing Dooms is actually better than um, Burning Heads. Because Searing Doom does have better um, armor piercing values. Uh, so, yeah. I think that's better. Something like that. Or maybe, like, Purple Sun of Zerius to put that onto the Dwarf Infantry. Because Purple Sun, like, that's one of the matches where it can, like, maybe do decent damage. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Especially with this one. Because your DPS, like, has uh, armor piercing. So, you don't need Plague of Rust. Yeah, I do think Searing Doom probably is the way to uh, deal it. It's like a, at least better than Burning Head. Otherwise, um, I think this is our next battle. Let me see if we got another one sent in. Yep, looks like Surprise sent in another one. Fantastic. Let's get you saved really quick before we go. And actually, let me start this loading and then get this saved. Should I be efficient with our time here? So that may be good. Yep, grudges were settled. I'm sure the dwarves will find another way to maintain a grudge against the Chaos Dwarves, but uh, at least put a dent in it. So we got Dubes versus Incars. Dwarves against Skaven. Uh, historically, a uh, lore-wise, a massive grudge match here again. Uh, dwarves find a way to find a lot of enemies. But um, historically, in-game, this is a very rough matchup for the, uh, the dwarves. Skaven have just been like an incredibly hard counter for them. So we will see how this one does. For the dwarves, we've got, uh, looks like, a uh, flame cannon and a regular cannon. Very, very cool. Flame cannon just super awesome. Look at these guys with the, like, the dragons on the head of it. Fantastic unit. If you can keep this thing online, it'll do some really good damage for you. Uh, also, the cannon as well. Um, if you can just keep, again, if you can keep this online, you can probably do good damage against the rat ogres or even those, um, those uh, uh, avalanche mortars. Do some pretty solid work into here. Uh, for this one, again, I... Th um... I think in this one, yeah, this is too tight of a formation here because, like, these mortars with their spread shots are going to be able to hit so many targets here. So I'm, I'm genuinely worried for that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we got Miners of Blast and Charges here. They're going to be able to clear off the Skink Shaft really quickly. Um, also, like, if Death Runners come in here, they'll be able to actually do decent work on them. If you can get a shot at them before they get into your infantry, you can do good work. Corlers, Corlers, uh, Corlers, they'll do good against, like, Rad Ogres. They'll do, even with the 100 armor, they'll do well against... Uh, they should do well against bombardier, uh, um, bombardiers, at least decently. Problem is, just Skaven can just swarm so well against them, and also the um, like uh, Gisales can just like neutralize them. So 
they're usually dead by the time they can even get into range to shoot your uh, other weapons teams. Otherwise, your leadership, you got Thorg Ironbrow. What does he got? He's got Rune of Slowness and Rune of Speed. You also have a Thane here. It looks like he's mostly bare bones. He does have Iron, Beans Re Iron Beard's Ring to provide that weakness to fire damage. Um, that's mostly going to pair well with your uh, Blasting Charges to help get that extra damage in. We also have, looks like a Gyrocopter, just a regular one with the Steam Cannons here. And uh, Deep in the Vanguard here, going... Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Rangers here. We got the Bugman's Rangers here in the Vanguard. It is going to take some time for them to actually get into range, unfortunately. But um, actually, if you can fire from the rear into the back of these uh, Gisales so their Silver Shields aren't working, you can actually do good damage there. So hopefully you can get some work there. Meanwhile, for the Skaven, we have the uh, Wolf Rats here. We got Wolf Rats on the flank. We got Night Runners and another Wolf Rat coming in from the flank. We also have, looks like a big old line of Clan Rats. Skaven Slim Spears. We also got some Death Globe, Death Globe uh, Bombardiers. And we also have a couple of War Block Gisales here, and uh, the Avalanche Mortars, and a couple of Rat Ogres, and of course, Ikaclaw himself coming in here on his Mighty Doom Wheel. He's bringing in here the Brass Orb, Unlimited Power, Warp Lightning, and a Howling Warp Gale, and a Flensing Ruin. Okay, that's a lot of spells, especially if you have Flensing Ruin, because you mostly want to overcast this. In my opinion, you if you want to cast your Flensing Ruins, you probably want to drop one of these spells. But it's not, in my opinion, with a match of this favorite, I don't think you're like too doing a disservice for you. Because Howling Warp Kill is not something you're going to spam, but you can actually... Actually, you should be able to get a good cast on it right here. If you can get onto those uh, Howling Warp Kill, onto those Gyrocopters, that's easy money for you. You can just shoot them with the Gisales and they're done. However, I think they will be able to escape without getting into range. Wait, they're coming back. Okay, that's not great. Yeah, Howling Warp Kill coming... Okay, now those Gisales are just going to be able to zero in and do fantastic work. So yeah, rough start for these Gyrocopters. They're going to get taken to, uh, taken to town. And uh, otherwise, those Flame Cannons are routing off some of these Clan Rats, but they are just Clan Rats, so you're not too worried about them. Unfortunately, now let's take a look at these mortar shots. How are they doing? Oh my god. Disgusting damage onto the Quarrelers. Uh, they're basically going to be routed off immediately. That is not great for them. If you are the Dwarves, yeah, I do think you want to kind of push up. You maybe want to leave some assets like Blasting Charges. Unfortunately, because now your artillery is just like completely open game for these Wolf Rats. Like, even if you left your Slayers back here, there's only one of them. They can only defend one of these guys at once. So yeah. Uh, really rough spot for you. This is, again, this is part of why this is a rough ratchet matchup for the Dwarves, because your Mortars can just do disgusting damage to your range, and your Gisales can do disgusting damage to the Dwarf range, and now your Dwarf counters to stuff like uh, Bombardiers, or like the Death Globes, I mean. Now your, your counters to them are dead, so, yeah, good luck with that. Um, otherwise, yeah, the Wolf Rats are already taking out this Flame Cannon, and very unfortunate. Uh, you got this other one in here going to be taking out these cannons. And the problem is also, like, even if Slayers jump on them, Wolf Rats are infantry-sized. Which means the Slayers aren't going to be able to rely on that bonus, get on that bonus for uh, large. So they're not going to be quite as good at peeling as they would be otherwise. Like, if this was, like, a light cavalry, um, they'd be a lot better. But, um, yeah. So the Giselles did get routed off, which, you know, good for them. Your Rat Ogres, in my opinion, this is kind of overkill. Uh, using two Rat Ogres to take out the bug ones. But, I mean, you got a routing, so now just chase off the Clan Rats. Get your Rat Ogres back here into the fight so they can start uh, charging in. Otherwise, what's going on here? Blasting Charges got disrupted by this uh, um, uh, Brass Orb. What was Ikaclaw doing here? Ikaclaw, he's doing okay. Um, looks like Flensing Ruin coming down. Is that Overcast? Yeah, Overcast, Flensing Ruin here. Even with that 35% uh, spell resistance, you'll still take that damage. Because Flensing Ruin, Ruin is just that powerful. Uh, unfortunately, Slayers are also getting kited by the Ninja Rats here with their little Shurikens here. This is like the nightmare matchup for uh, Dwarf Player. Um, because, yeah, Slayers can't catch them. And the Night Runners will just do a lot of damage into them because they're so lightly armored. So yeah, good work for them. Otherwise, the Avalanche Mortars, yeah, you want to shoot them in on these guys. Unfortunately for the um, Archers, like I, they won't do too amazingly against them because 70 armor and they're low model count. So each model has like a, a lot of infantry for something like a crossbow to take out. So yeah, rough spot for them. And also now you have these Rat Ogres coming in here. Um, they should, Rat Ogres should be able to just like jump on the Thoric and peel for them. And also these... um. Yeah, get these, you want to you wanna peel off these guys so that way your mortars, yep, so you're, they can keep shooting. So now your Rattlers are on there. Rattlers are on there. Uh, your Gisales are back, so now they'll be able to just turn and just keep shooting into somebody like Thoric. Um, how are your Bombardiers doing? Uh, what are these guys, Dwarf Warriors? Yeah, they're getting good damage in them. They're going to route them off soon. Or, yep, minus 30 leaders. They should be routing. Okay, so they're routing, so that's fine. These guys peel for themselves. Yeah, um, this is basically just why this matchup's so tough for Dwarves. Um, your range can't deal with their range. Your infantry usually can't deal with theirs either. Um, it doesn't kill fast enough. So yeah. Pretty tough one. Looks like army losses should be setting in pretty soon. Uh, it's basically just these Slayers here. So yeah, Skaven take the day Dwarves on that towel. Uh, yeah, this is really tough for them. Dwarves. 
I honestly have no idea how to beat this matchup. The main way to win this matchup is to not play at all if you're a dwarf player, uh, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, Skaven, let's look at the value here. Just, yeah, a ton of damage from these uh, Avalanche Mortars. Uh, Giselle's got some good work in. Uh, Global Deers, this one just did amazingly well. 1,400 value, just fantastic. Uh, these guys, I mean, they're still healthy, so they're not too bad. Rat Ogres did some just some decent work getting off those Bugman's Rangers. The Wolf Rats did a good job dealing with the Artillery. Yugi Night Runners did a good job um, just shooting into the Slayers. Ica Claw did solid work here. Got some good damage out. Um, good job setting up those uh, Gyrocopters to get killed. And uh, yeah, Flame Cannon did do good work. This guy's a fantastic unit. But otherwise, yeah, Slayers didn't do well. The regular cannon did some good job here, but the Bugman Rangers, the Gyrocopters, the Corollers, not a single one of them paid for themselves. The Blasting Charges, yeah, none of them paid for themselves. Just, yeah, just a really tough matchup for this uh, Dwarves. But, yeah, GG. Thank you, everybody. Um, we should have another replay in here. Okay, here we go. Surprise against Turtle Punch. Chaos Dwarves against Greenskins. Pretty fun matchup. Looks like for the Chaos Dwarves, we've got, uh, okay, we've got Kadai, uh, Kadai Fireborn. That's going to be pretty sick. Yeah, I like these guys. They're one of my favorite Chaos Dwarf units. Unfortunately, I don't see them, like, super often. They are, like, still kind of expensive for what they bring you, but they are very cool. All right, so, yeah, look at these guys. Yeah, these guys just look sick. Look at them. Basically, just, like, what are they, like, demons that are bound to the armor or whatever? Yeah, really, really cool unit. Just like fat armor piercing, like anti infantry damage. Yeah, 20 bonus for infantry, huge damage output. Um, 80 armor is nice. They're just thing is like, just for their cost, they just they do get kind of uh, killed really quickly. For their cost, specifically. Because, um, yeah, I think they're like 1500 gold. Yeah, they're just super expensive. Anyway, otherwise, we got a bunch of chaff here. Looks like a mix of orc laborers and goblin laborers. Their job is basically just to die. Got a couple blunderbusses. Looks like one and two cast or blunderbusses. Um, solid damage output, really solid damage output, just like shorter range, but yeah, that, that damage output's really strong. Otherwise, we got a, uh, we got a Skullcracker here. They said big old tank here, just a lot of armor-piercing anti-infantry damage. We also got a Magma Cannon here. This guy used to be way more common back when they first brought it, came into the game, but otherwise, like, they're kind of, they're just kind of okay now. They still do good work against, like, lightly armored infantry, like, against a bowline, they can do decent work, but otherwise, uh, they're not, like, super amazing, but still decent. Uh, you also got, it looks like, one, two, and three character warriors, and a Sorcerer Prophet of Fire. He's got Cascading Fire Cloak and Burning Head. Burning Head, this time, is pretty solid into Dwarves, because, or not Dwarves, into Greenskins, because green, Greenskins do have a lot of lightly armored infantry that you can use on them. Be it the uh, Archer Line or, like, these nasty Skulkers or stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, I think we got everything. Is there any other mobility? No mobility, that's interesting. Otherwise, um, so for the green skins, we have, looks like there's um, a couple of orc biggins. We got one and two, looks like. Yeah. And then we just got night goblins, squig hoppers. Also got some night goblins. These are not the fanatic, right? Or they are the fanatic, so that. Actually, one little thing, by the way, in case you want to know, if you want to be able to tell the difference between night goblins and night goblin fanatics in your opponent's army, just look at this part on the tooltip. It says special ranged weapon. That's the spinning wounds. That's how you know they're fanatics. So yeah, burst them down really quickly and they won't be able to uh, deal with you. Uh, also, the Rusty Arrows, these guys are solid here, give you that Thunder Armor. They pair really well with like a Mass Archer line, just to help deal with armor targets. Otherwise, we got a bunch of Orc Boys, Orc Boys, uh, Goblin, these are Goblins. Uh, some more Savage Orc Arrow Boys, really interesting army here. And um, more Orc Biggins in the uh, Tree line here. What are these guys? Savage Orcs also. We got some Black Orcs in here, very, very cool unit. They got their great weapons and stuff like that. Uh, huge, ar good armor values, really good, uh, weapon strength too, just, like, really strong damage. Um, if you can keep them just from getting shot to pieces by, like, say, these blunderbusses, you can get some really strong work from them. Because, other than the blunderbusses, the Kadai Fireborn can get their good work into them, but otherwise, um, a lot of this, like, Chaos Dwarf Infantry and stuff like that, they're gonna do great work into them. Otherwise, for your hero core, what do we got? We got a Night Goblin Shaman, he's got Vindictive Glare, he's got Sneaky Stabbing. This has got his Wand of Jet and his, uh, Mad Cat Mushrooms. And we got a Black Orc Big Boss and Grimgore himself, the biggest and the baddest. He's coming in here, he's got your next. He's got Gitsnik for that damage spike and Bloodforge armor just to help clear out some infantry, just give him some more mobility. And also best of the best for that uh, melee defense and damage resistance when an enemy lord or hero is in uh, within 30 meters. Black Orc Big Boss, does he have anything? Dragon Slayer's Fang, uh, that's not bad. Just gives himself a buff when he's low on HP. Rabble Rouse for immune to psychology, I mean that can at least give you some stuff. Uh, Brass Cleaver as well. This guy's very expensive with this kit. 
Um, in my opinion, this guy for this cost is not really useful for you. He's not gonna. He just doesn't deal enough damage to be worth this cost. But otherwise, uh, still really cool. Nice to see a black orc theme build. Otherwise, we'll get this going. See how things go. Okay, so your magma can should be getting shots off now. What are they shooting at? They seem they're shooting at these uh, orc arrow boys, but they're not doing much damage. Let's see how does this do? Okay, that really was not that much. Like, honestly. First of all, I do think you probably want to shoot onto the, uh, the Rusty Arrows as soon as they're visible. That's a better target for you. But yeah, that was not that good of a shot. From, like, one shot. Yeah. That's, that's stuff like that's why you don't see them as often. <coughs> oh, I just posturing. Okay, that and also they just completely missed these Orc Boys. Yeah, come on, guy. Get it together. Alright. Let's see, you're gonna redeem yourself? Let's see how he does. Alright. Okay. How's that one going? Still just missed. Okay, what are you what are you doing? <laughs> this guy fucking sucks. Okay, I was trying to be nice earlier when I said, like, oh, you know, he's okay, he does decent work. But you're just like you're missing point blank. Okay, so we got some art, um some chaff against chaff here, although the regular orc boy should do well. However, this switch of profit is also gonna beat him up pretty bad. So yeah. Decent engagement for them. Unfortunately, your big uh, beat stick, um, your Black Orc big boss, and uh, Grimgore are foot characters, so they're going to have trouble with getting their engagements. All this guy needs to do is just make sure you keep moving. Because, like, your next was Pop, but, like, look how far away he is. He's not he's not going to be able to get there in time. So, yeah, unfortunate for them. But, um, otherwise, I do think this green skin formation is just too spread out. Like, you're losing a lot of infantry for nothing. Like, obviously, like, these guys are cheap, so it's not, like, ostensibly a huge loss. But if you lose them in exchange for like doing nothing while they're taking the damage, then they're not doing their job as chaff. You're just you're just giving them free value. Um, so yeah, you want to collapse in with like all your mobility and stuff like that at once. Like uh, your nasty skulker should be coming in on the heading for the blunderbusses. Uh, your black orc should be emerging from the trees. Your mobility should be swinging around these flanks all around the same time as your inf your chaff gets in. Because otherwise now they're just picking you off one by one. The Squeak Hopper's coming in here, they are getting, uh, looks like they're getting onto it. So Waz popping, however, you don't have much in melee, unfortunately, for the wallet. Black Orcs are out of melee, uh, your cavalry, a lot of your cavalry's not in melee yet. I mean, they're trying to get on, actually, okay, if they, actually, if they can get a surround on the, this guy, they can actually get really good work in, because they're armor-piercing and anti-large. So that's actually, this actually could be a good get. Yeah, if you're the Chaos Star player, that's a mistake letting him go so far. Like, you should have, as soon as this guy started routing, pull him back to your own support and just cycle charge the rest of the infantry. Because right now, yeah, this is... Yeah, that's a good get. So I guess the dwarfs, you are the greenskins, you uh, redeemed yourselves. However, you want to get these archers out of there. So that way they can just um, get you uh, some shots off. Black Orcs, unfortunately, taking a really rough engagement here. They're getting hit by the... Um, unfortunately, it looks like they get distracted by the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. Because now these blunderbusses just have free shots right into the side of them. Really tough. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Uh, they're not having a good time. Yeah, Magma Cannon coming in here. Honestly, Magma Cannon didn't really do shit. But uh, the blunderbuss is doing really well. And now your Black Orcs are already starting to rot off with like 40% of their HP left. Yeah, so that's really rough for the uh, Greenskins. Kedai Fireborn completely untouched. So they're in a great shape to just clear out a lot of this infantry. Um, especially like the Savage uh, Orc Warriors because they do magic damage. So they'll just chomp through them really easily. Nasty Skulkers coming in here. Although again, like if you can get these Kedai Fireborn just right around the... Just rear charging them, uh, you can do fine. And then like uh, like just kite back with your um, Blunderbusses. And uh, you can clear these guys off really quickly. Unless you have a burning head. You can pop a burning head right on these guys. It'll be perfectly fine. Skullcrackers, uh, yeah, still getting killed. But yeah, not in a great spot. Although, actually, that Magma Cannon did... Finally, you did some good damage. Uh, that was pretty solid. You'll take that onto these uh, archers. So, you know, you got one good shot in you. Otherwise, you have Black Orcs running off. That's not good. Uh, you want to get these uh, big ones activated. Get them onto these uh, Kedai Fireborn. Because otherwise, they're just going to wear you down. Uh, how are we doing here? Uh, Sorcerer Prophet is just fighting the Nasty Skulkers. Honestly, just let them get engaged, uh, and then uh, pop a Burning Head onto them, and you'll just, like, route them off instantly. How else is the rest of this? I want to just keep an eye. Yeah, Burning Head's coming in here. It's a little bit off-center, but that still should do just decent damage. Yeah, I mean, he still routed them off, so he'll take it. Not as good optimal placement, but, you know, he'll still take it. What else going on here? Uh, so yeah, the Chaos Dwarves are ahead on the balance of power. Uh, it definitely does seem that way. 
Otherwise, what is, um, you probably want to switch that magma cannon on those archers pretty quick when you can. Otherwise, Castors, they have plenty of infantry left. Their lord's in good shape. Their Kadai Fireborn are in great shape. Most of their blender buses, like, they've taken a lot of HP damage, but they still have a decent amount of models left. Yeah, if you're green skins, I just, I don't know how you win this. Yeah, your black orcs are just, they're not really in a position to do well, because when you try to move them in, the uh, Castors have plenty to take them out. And unfortunately, like, Biggins, Orc Boar, Orc, orc Boar Biggins, or just the Orc, the Boar Cav in general, they're just not that good into infantry, I find. They just don't, they just don't deal with them well. So yeah, they're not that great at cycle charging either. So yeah, and also, like, the Sorcerer Lord, he's just gonna, like, he's got nothing stopping him here. Like, these, um, even these Orc Boar Biggins, even, they're ostensibly, like, anti-large armor, armor piercing and whatnot, but, like, as soon as they, um, like, he can probably just wear them off. Although this magma cannon might be able to just do it like with the burnt leadership debuff and also shot by artillery because that gives you a minus 10 so yeah that just shatters them so yeah rough spot for the green skins um i really do think like the big issue here was like just like bringing yourself in trickling them in like pieces bit by bit instead of collapsing it all at once because otherwise like once you do that then like because dwarf uh, once you do that then like they can just pick you apart one by one with their range vindictive glare just doing okay here um I think you might be better off with death magic here, like if you just rely on Fate Abunas and stuff like that, because with the uh, Chaos Sorcerer Lords, they can take this uh, Chalice of Blood and Darkness, which gives them a heal every single time you cast a spell. So if you bring something cheap like Vindictive Glare and just spam it throughout the game, that's going to give them a ton of healing. So if you bring something like Fate Abuna, you can get your value from it with like less cast, like maybe like three casts, three or four casts you're going to get through in a game, and that way you get just minimize the amount of benefit they get from the healing. So that can be pretty solid. Otherwise, yeah, unfortunately, Grimgore is being worn down by these uh, Kadai Fireborn. Yeah, it's a shame. Grimgore is so cool. Look at this guy. He's doing his best. You gonna swing? Come on, take a swing. But otherwise, yeah, Blender Buses. Oh, they're kind of shooting their own guys here. But yeah, they're shoot gonna be shooting into these uh, Orc Biggins. Easy target for them. There's no real pressure either. Like, these guys aren't going to be able to do much. Yeah, otherwise. Start fast forwarding a bit here. Especially just a matter of cycle charging. Oh, wait, is that Sorcerer Prophet going to get killed? So maybe, like, Grimgore can get a bit of a constellation. Okay, you got the Kadai Fireborn down at least. But yeah, Grimgore himself only 700. He's routing, shattering. Army losses sets in, and the Chaos Dwarves take the day. So, really good work from them. Um, yeah, I think for the green skin store punch, I think just your main concern here is um, you just, like, you trickled in too much stuff piece by piece. Like, these, you had your infantry really wide out in the in, in the forest, and by the time they got into the battle, a lot of your, like, center line, like your orc boys and stuff like that, had been routed off. So, um, yeah, just really unfortunate. Um, unfortunate timing. I think it just didn't work. Yeah, Sorcerer Prophet, uh, really good value. Just, just clearing off a lot of that infantry with those burning heads and stuff like that. Kadai Fireborn, great value. Just, again, clearing off uh, a bunch of infantry. Skullcracker, he started off good, but then he got caught up by those Borp Beacons, so that was unfortunate. Magma Cannon did pay for itself because it was able to just stay online shooting for so long, but still, this guy, like, we saw those shots that they just point blank missed. It's just, I don't know, stuff like that never feels good. Blunderbuss has also just got really good damage. They just didn't really get down, shut down. Because, yeah, with the dwarves, like something like Chaos Dwarves or Dwarves, you want to collapse in all at once so that you can get your disruption. You can swarm their lines and disrupt their range units. Because that's where most of their DPS is here. Uh, a lot of their DPS is. So, yeah, if you can't do that, then you're just you're just going to struggle. Yeah, Chaos Dwarves, they're holding units. Chaff, just chaff is chaff. They're just going to do whatever. Uh, Grimgore at least got some decent value onto the Kadai Fireborn. Blackrock Big Boss, he got some okay value. Unfortunately, he still didn't pay for himself here. Because with the kit you bring with him, he ends up being, like, really expensive. So, I just don't find, like, him to be that useful. The Dink of Glare, Glare Caster. So, you did get a lot of value, particularly onto the Sorcerer Prophet. But I still do think that, like, taking, like, Laura a Death Hag or something like that might be better. The problem is also, then, the Death Hag is weak to, um, is weak to fire, which the Dwarves have a lot of. So, because she's a she's a troll, so she has regeneration. But um, in that case, like I honestly think like Azag might be a better lord into Chaos Dwarfs than uh, Grimgore. Just it's just unfortunate because Grimgore he has a uh, foot melee character problems where he just can't get his engagements because um all like the Sorcerer Prophet has to do is just run away. Like he was a, he did have the Kadai Fireborn just sitting on him for most of the game, so that's why he's able to get good damage. But honestly, for the Chaos Dwarf player, 
if we're uh, surprised. If you want to just, you can just pull them away and just let him be bogged down in Chaos Dwarf infantry. Now Grimgor and, and Bob here, can't, they just can't do anything. They're just stuck fighting infantry for the whole game. Meanwhile, your actual big damage out outlets can just clear out everything else. You know what I mean? So yeah, otherwise, yeah, the Pickens, they did okay. They just, again, they just didn't collapse in when they needed to. Um, your arrows also, they just got routed off. Uh, Black Orcs, yeah, unfortunately, they just got shot up by the blunderbusses because you didn't weren't able to shut them down. But otherwise, yeah, the infantry, they did okay. But, uh, yeah, thanks for the game. It's pretty cool. I think I have another replay set in here. Let's get you... Let's get you saved so that we can get this one casted. Yeah, hopefully the stuff I'm saying is, like, helpful. Uh, replace. Do you get another one in? I think this might be... Hold on a second. Auto save replay. Okay, here we go. Finally, we're seeing Warriors of Chaos against the Hiles. Very cool. Always like seeing Chaos against High Elves. Especially because for High Elves, it's like Warriors of Chaos is a matchup where they can take Swordmasters in pretty reliably. So that's pretty cool. Always fun to see. I don't want to send my first turn. Okay, so if you go into... Sorry, give me one second. Um, if you go into App Data, Roaming, then you find the Creative Assembly, then Warhammer 3, then once you get into that Warhammer 3 folder, you will find Replays. Or here, let me just um, screenshot something. Here, check the uh, Discord. Go into the attorney appointment. Check the Discord. I've just posted a screenshot that basically tells you where you can hear you can find your replays. Then just... Drag and drop the file into Discord, and that's it. There you go. So that should let you know how to find um, the uh, replace. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, so yeah, let's get this going. Yeah, hopefully you're able to find the replays then. So yeah, with the uh, let's start with the Warriors of Chaos. We got a couple of Marauder Horsemen here and a couple of dogs here, one on the left and then right flank respectively. We also have looks like a bunch of Marauders, one, two, three, four, and five Marauders. We also got Marauders of Slesh with the Hell Slanesh with the Hell Scourges. These guys they got the whips, they got the little purple, purple plumes and whatnot, looking very fabulous. And they got their shields here. Pretty solid unit. Um, decent defense stats, melee defense, and also they do have expert charge defense, which is nice and decent leadership, especially with that immune psychology. So that can really, uh, they can be a pretty solid holding unit for their cost. Um, also got, what do we got? Chaos Warriors. Looks like three Chaos Warriors. Very nice. For our leadership, we got Valkia the Bloody. Looking very, uh, very spooky here. She's got her Scarlet Armor. Honestly, I don't think this is good. Like, what? because it just, um, in my experience, it just doesn't charge up fast enough to be useful. But otherwise, yeah, she's got friendly, good, uh, she's infantry size, which is, um, good against, she just doesn't have to worry about anti-large, but also she herself does a bonus for large of 20 and armor piercing damage. Pretty solid duelist. Um, her main downside is she does do fire damage, which if the high elves bring Imric, uh, he actually has fire resistance, so that can be unfortunate for, her, uh, mitigating her damage. But otherwise, she does have the, um, where are you? The Demon Shield gives her temporary invulnerability. And Spear of Slopnir, which is going to be good, especially into those elite inf um, high elf infantry lines. Otherwise, we've got Skull Crushers of Corn, Looking very uh, heavy metal here with their um, Crimson Armor. Uh, these guys are such a cool unit. Um, yeah, heavy heavy armor with 130 armor. they got really heavy armor piercing damage with uh, 10 bonus for large. Quite nice. And also that uh, charge bonus is very good as well. Their big downside is that they are very expensive. And um, also very slow. Like only 62 speed for a cavalry unit is quite slow. So, um, they should be able to get, uh, it's, they struggle to get their good engagements, that's a big thing. So yeah, especially with, like, stuff like Fata Buna with being so good against them, a really good spell against them, and they don't have, like, as much heal access to healing, being a Warrior's Chaos faction, so that kind of does, uh, make things rough for them. Especially on Corn, they're really bad, because they don't have any healing support on Corn, of course. But, uh, for the Hiles, we got the Illyrian Reavers, uh, one Illyrian Reaver and one Silver Helm in the tree line. We also have, looks like you got... 
one, two, and three Spearman. One, two, and three uh, white lines of Trace here. Uh, Trace, uh, they're pretty solid uh, generalist armor piercing infantry unit. Very, very nice. Uh, we also got uh, four leadership. We've got Imric on his mighty, mighty Star Dragon here. Just huge uh, combat set. Just a massive beat stick. Also, a good HP pool, especially when paired with a Life Mage. She's coming in here with Earth Blood and Regrowth here, just for just really strong healing. Regrowth in particular is just so strong, especially because it replenishes your vigor pretty much entirely. And then it gives you that. Um, for Imric, especially with the Star Dragon having 9,500 HP, um, that, uh, what is it? I think it's 29% heal? Or it's like a 23% heal. That's just that's a, that's just so much value uh, healed back for you. Otherwise, we've got, uh, what do we got? A couple, like three archers, four archers, excuse me. And then a Swordmaster of Hoeth. These guys, I like these guys so much. Look at these, especially with that, yeah, I think this is, um, I can't remember what the name of the faction, is, the minor faction this is, but their color scheme is so cool with the baby blue and like the gold trims. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, but yeah, with that said, we should have everything covered, and let's get going. So if you're the Warriors of Chaos, you want to be really careful with these Warhounds when they're by these, um, these cavalry, because yeah, if they can get a clean charge on to the dogs, they'll just do incredibly well. Yeah, and, uh, Skirmishers, unfortunately, they're taking a bit of damage here from these Archers. Archers just really good at counter skirmishing. Um, especially because Emmerich, none of this damage is stuff you can't heal from really easily, so, yeah. Uh, unfortunate trade initially. Otherwise, oh, also, I forgot the Chaos Sorcerer of Death here for the, um... Words of Chaos has Soul Blight and Fate of Buna. Um, Fate of Buna, you probably just want to save to cast on the uh, Swordmasters of Oath. Basically, just yeah, just focus on casting it on them just to clear out some of that elite infantry, so that way your um, your infantry is free to just bog down their stuff. So yeah, I think for the Words of Chaos, what you want to do is I do think this is like too tight because basically all these Marauders and Chaos Words are kind of just gonna be stuck on top of each other. So I think with these uh, Marauders, if you're going to be going this infantry, you want to spread them out on the flanks and swarm in from the flanks. Get them onto these archers and distract them from shooting. So that way, and then your regular Chaos Warriors can just grind, try to grind with the regular units. So yeah, so yeah that's what you want to do, especially because that way you can bind in the archers so that the archers can't be shooting your uh, damage pieces like your Skull Crushers and stuff. Yeah, ultimately I do think this is a bit too much infantry. I don't think you need this much buffering. Like if you can drop a couple of these... And get some like more like mobile assets. I think that would be better. But otherwise, yeah, the archers are shooting at the marauders. Like you'll take that, um, and also chaos warriors. You'll definitely take that. Those are not great targets for them. If you're the archers, in my opinion, I think you want to focus on shooting your the marauder horseman, uh, like the caster, since he's on horseback, so he's decently easy to shoot. And also the uh, skull crushers when they come in here, because even with that 130 armor, whatever damage you can get to them is really valuable. So they're so expensive. Looks like Fate of Buna coming down onto these white lines of trace. I do think that's a mistake. You will get, like, okay value onto them, but I really think you want to just save it for the Swordmasters. Just, they're such an elite unit. Like, a Fate of Buna onto a 1300 versus 800 gold. Like, the math really just does check out. Yeah, so, Emmerich is coming down here. He's terrorizing these uh, Marauders, just getting a, just clearing out some of that infantry solid for him. However, I do think he wants to pull out and get these white lines in here onto the flank supporting, so that way you can buffer against these uh, Skull Crushers. Because otherwise, right now, he's just taking easy damage into Valkyrie, especially since she should have her Demon Shield popped up, so she's not taking damage back. And uh, also, like, your horses are being shot at as well. So I think, yeah, the horses are shooting into, like, just really rough targets for them on the infantry. And all of these guys are really stacking up their uh, infantry. Like, you have your Spearmen and your Swordmasters stacked up a lot. Oddly enough, actually, in this engagement, what you want to do is, you send your Swordmasters in after the Spearmen have taken the charge, and you pull your Spearmen back. So your Swordmasters get the engagement they want against all this infantry, and your Spearmen, you can now dedicate them elsewhere wherever you need a holding unit to do its thing. So in my opinion, that would be, that's a really good tech um, for anybody if you're listening. Um, Emmerich, again, he's just taken, uh, yeah, this is a rough spot for him, because he's surrounded by uh, Valkia and the Skull Crushers, are a lot of armor-piercing anti-large in them. You really want to pull him out of there. Get it first of all, get an overcasted regrowth onto him immediately. So yeah, you get the regrowth onto him, that's fine. But just yeah, try to try to pull him out through his own spears. So that way you can just try to get him out of there. Unfortunately, your spears did route. And um Yeah, meanwhile, in my opinion, I think it would have been better to just get your archers focusing on these uh Marauder horsemen, because you can clear them off really quickly if they're just gonna sit there and try to shoot at Imric. And uh, get one of these white lines, because you got, again, two of them stacked up. Like, there's, you're not getting efficient contact here, because a bunch of your models are just stuck being blocked by your friendly models. So, you're just not getting good work into them. So, get one of these other uh, white lines of trace uh, onto these uh, Skull Crushers to try to buff them off. And now, because, yeah, now Emmerich, unfortunately, like, he's going to come back, because they're not chasing with Valkyrie. But, um, yeah, that's still, that's a lot of damage that you're just giving to them. But, although, speaking of that, uh, with uh, Chaos Player... I get the motivation between, behind going after uh, the Mage of Life, but I do think it would be way better 
if you just center, just chase off uh, Imric from the back. Because, look, if you see his heal cap, he's got a lot of healing left. Uh, if you just chase him off of Valky Valkyrie, just, he can't heal back any of that stuff. See, now he's coming back, so he can just pull back here and then get uh, overcrested regrowth. But, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I do think stacking up your stuff is a bit of a mistake here. Um, yeah, and for your Deathcaster, I think you want to get your Bunas onto that Swordmaster Poet. But yeah, these Skull Crushers are doing a really good job just clearing out, getting good damage onto Imric, clearing out these Archers. Especially because, like, for the um, high up mobility, they've been kind of stuck just, like, trying to deal with other stuff. So they haven't been there to help uh, block up for their Archers. But yeah, so yeah, unfortunate for them because, yeah, now these Skull Crushers, they're just completely uncontested back here. Um, yeah, a bit of a rough spot here. So yeah, Wars of Chaos are taking advantage of the balance of power, and that definitely doesn't make sense to me. Otherwise, yeah, because all you really have are your Swordmaster both, but they're just going to get surrounded and ganked. Um, plus, also, I'm pretty sure the uh, Chaos Sorcerer should have a Fate of Buna left in the pocket. I know they cast that earlier one and then a Soul Blight down here, but I think they should have at least one more Fate of Buna to just finish them off. Because a Fate of Buna at like, this HP, that's going to kill them. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, and now, like, Imrek's taking the fight against Valkyrie. Valkyrie's got her Demon Shield up, so she's not going to take any damage. She just needs, like, two more hits, and then the Imrek's done. Two more hits, and he should be routed off. He's routing as well, but yeah, maybe... Is she gonna get another hit in? Either way, just chase him off, and you're fine. And your Skull Crusher can just run down this back line. And then, like, start recycle charging the uh, Elite Infantry. Yeah, and for this Chaos Sorcerer... Yeah, it looks like Fate of coming in here. That's gonna be, unfortunately, spell the Doom for the Swordmasters of Hoeth. Uh... Yeah, slip going down. So yeah, that's going to take them out. Meanwhile, what else is here? I, yeah, I really don't see how the Hiles can get back into this. They have a lot of, like, white lines and stuff like that, but um, they're just not going to be able to take out all this stuff. Especially because all you can do is just, all you have to do is just cycle charge with the Skull Crusher. Um, and then they're done. I think, does Valkyrie have a Spear Slop in stuff? Okay, she used all the Spear Slop in Yeah, just cycle charge with your mobility, and you can just clear off those white lines and stuff. Hey, Black Knight, what's up? How you doing? Uh, so yeah, the horsemen. Um, yeah, just cycle charge. Like, see, yeah, get a rear charge onto these spears, and then you'll just rot them off easily and be able to chase them off. So yeah, where is the chaos take the day? Um, in my opinion, yeah, for the high elves, I think you were a bit too, uh, you let Imric get caught up, in, like, just surrounded by the Skull Crushers and Valkyrie. That's just a really tough spot for them again. Plus, also, the horsemen were able to just, like, freely get shots into him. I think um, if you had just gotten your archer line firing on those horsemen, like, I know they seem kind of low value on their own, but you can kill them so quickly, so easily. It's just, it's just easy ma easy money for you. So I think, yeah, prioritizing those guys first just to take off the pressure that's on Emmerich would be great. Um, I also like stacking up your white lions and stuff like that and your, and your sword masters. That really just makes them just, like, less efficient. Um, you just really, like, for high elves, your high elves are an expensive roster. They're paying a lot for their stats, because they do have really high stats, but if you stack your units on infantry on top of each other, you're not getting good contact with your models, you can't make use of your stats, so you're just leaving money on the table. Um, so yeah, I think those were your two biggest mistakes there. Uh, otherwise, like, the Swordmasters did really well. I really like Swordmasters, it's such a cool unit. I love seeing them do well. But otherwise, like, your White Lions, like, yeah, see, they couldn't really get much value in, because they just couldn't get good contact in their engagements. Um... But otherwise, and also, I do think if you're going to have only two uh, cavalry pieces, I think you want to play them defensively when you have four archers and two cavalry because you need to, like, keep that mobile pressure off of your archers so your archers can get their value. So, yeah, because I know I saw them, like, far out on the flank, and I just think they're out of place there because they're not able to do much. Because it's not like Warriors of Chaos. They don't have a back line that you can try to run down with your cavalry, right? Because they're, they're not an archer faction. So, yeah, you want to use the your cavalry defensively. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, that stuff... Yeah, that's uh, just good stuff to uh, bear in mind. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, Skull Crusher's got a ton of value. It's very good for them. Uh, the Fate of Unicaster did fantastic as well. I do think for Chaos, I think this is like a bit too much infantry here. I think like, like for example, um, yeah, just like because you ended up stacking up a lot of your stuff too. It's just that you had a lot of uh, um, just cheaper infantry to get in there. And because like you didn't even, because like with this uh, disparity in infantry, you should be able to actually co compromise that back line pretty well just by swarming with your infantry like chaos warriors on the front line marauders um flanking the uh, flanking around just swarming that way but the inf the back line it only got compromised because the skull crushers got in so with that i think yeah you should have just gone wider if you're going to go with this in many infantry otherwise you're gonna have the same issue where you're stacking them on top so 
while the high elves were losing the value that they get from their uh, high stats by stacking up, you were losing the value that you get from your cheap cost and being able to swarm by stacking them up because now you lose that swarm potential. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully that was uh, useful. But otherwise, yeah, GG, fun game. And uh, I think we have some more replays coming in here. Let me see. Yeah, we got another one from Incarus. Very nice. Sorry, just give me one second to get all these saved. Got another one from Surprise. Let's get you. Mm-hmm. I think we got two more. I think these might be the last of it for round four. All right, let's get you finally. Okay, we should be all set with these replays. Let's just uh, let's get back in here. Okay, first one will be Tomb Kings against Dwarves. This is going to be interesting to see how you guys do this one. Because, yeah, generally speaking, historically, this has been a... I hope I'm not being, like, a huge cunt or whatever with this. Uh, I know I'm giving, like, critique or whatever, but uh, I'm trying to be, like, not an asshole about it. Um... But yeah, so generally speaking, uh, dwarves are a tough matchup for Tomb Kings to deal with. Um, yeah, it's been fun so far. I've liked it. Uh, for Tomb Kings, um, generally speaking, no, the tips are good. Okay, thank you. Uh, so yeah, because dwarves, generally speaking, you're, the Tomb Kings struggle to clear out the dwarf infantry because a lot of what they would usually have as their infantry assets just don't do well against them. Like, Cameron War Sphinxes aren't very good at clearing out their infantry, unfortunately. I think it's like, I don't know if it's their collision attacks aren't great. Something like that with War Sphinxes. They just don't, for their cost, they just don't clear out infantry like they should. Uh, also, Tomb Scorpions, like, forget about it. Uh, they're just dog shit. Um, and the, um, what's it called? The other one. Skeleton Chariots. Yeah, they don't clear it out as well. Um... Otherwise, uh, but yeah, so we'll get into the armors first, and then I'll talk about the matchup a bit later. So for the skeleton, uh, Tomb Kings, we got, uh, looks like we got one, two, and I think that's three Tomb Guard. Also got a bunch of Skeleton Warriors here. looks like one, two, three, uh, we got four and five. So lots of uh, Skellies. And we got a couple Bone Giants in here. That's very interesting. So here's the thing with the, uh, the big old Boner Giants. Um, I'm guessing they're being brought in as an anti-artillery piece. The problem is I just... In my opinion, I don't. Th in my experience, I don't think they trade well into dwarf cannons. I think dwarf cannons win that duel. Like two dwarf cannons against two bone giants, I'm pretty sure the dwarf cannons win that duel. But I might be mistaken. Um, but yeah, and otherwise, like they are an anti-large piece. So like maybe if they bring Thoric on his uh, his anvil, they can do well. But otherwise, you don't have any shots for them that are actually like a good target for them. Uh, they're delivered in a very constructive manner. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Um, and otherwise, yeah, for our leadership, we got a uh, good old Ark in the Black here. Um, he's coming in here with Purple Son of Zarius. It's going to be interesting. I want to see how this does. Um, because I know that, um, they have that 35% spell resistance, but it should be, this should be at least if a Vortex spell is going to do well against them, at least ostensibly, Purple Son of Zarius should do well against them. But otherwise, we get the Staff of Nagash, the Libra Mortis, and the Tomb Blade of Arkan. And, um, we also got a Chosen of the Gods here. These guys, if you can keep them alive, they will do well against the, uh, the, um, Dwarves. The problem is, uh, Cannons. Dwarf cannons do really well against these guys. Uh, just, yeah, fantastic. Otherwise, we got, looks like we got one carrion. Did we, okay, we got two carrions, one in each flank. And we've got the Necropolis Knights. These guys are so cool. Look at these guys. Just these badass, like, stone uh, skeleton, uh, snake constructs. And these, like, uh, Tomb Guard dudes on top of it. But, yeah, these guys are really cool. The standard unit, the Halberd, these guys are just the regular variant, which, in my opinion, is um, the best one. They're solid, not amazing. But, yeah, the Halberd variant is just dog shit. But, um, anyway, going on to the dwarves. We have, looks like we got some uh, Dwarf Warriors here. We got a bunch of Miners of Blasting Charges. They'll do really well at clearing out those uh, those uh, Skeletons, especially if they get on those Tomb Guard. Because the Tomb Guard, I know they have those Silver Shields, but against Blasting Charges, that does not help. The Silver Shields only block like the regular Missile itself. The Explosive Damage does not get blocked. So yeah, the, um, so yeah. If you, in my opinion, if you're the Tomb Kings, you want to send in your Skeleton Warriors first. Uh, so they can eat those charges. We also got the Warriors of the Dragonfire Pla Pass. They will actually do pretty well against the, uh, just grinding down the enemy ch uh, Tomb King Chaff. We also have, looks like, one and two Bugman's Rangers. Another Dwarf Warrior here on the side. We have, uh, how many Slayers we got here? We got one and two Slayers. We got one and two Dwarf Cannons. Very nice. And we've got, uh, one and, uh, 
No, just one Thunderer. Okay, so one Thunderer, just a good piece of shortage, uh, source of uh, armor-piercing mid-range damage. I also got a Runesmith here, uh, Hammer of Karak Draws, and also Rune of Slowness and Rune of Wrath and Ruin. I think the big one here is you're going to want to put that Rune of Wrath and Ruin onto those Tomb Guard. Uh, Rune of Slowness, you don't really need it because the Tomb King's big uh, big stuff isn't really something you have to worry about slowing down. Like, it's like it's not like Bone Giants. You're going to be able to like, dodge your stuff, right? Uh, but yeah, and then you have Grom Brindle. How are you guys doing? Okay, you lost one model. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to actually get this going. So there's Grom Brindle as well. So yeah, there we go. I want to actually see this artillery duel. Unfortunately, like with the cannons, because they'll be able to fire over this, no problem. But I don't know if the Bone Giants are going to be able to actually like hit them effectively. Let's see. Okay, that missed, unfortunately. Okay, that was a clean hit. Nice. So you're taking out two models. That's actually... that's actually They're performing better than I thought they would. So who knows? Maybe I'm going to learn something new today. Um, But yeah, how are you guys doing? Eh, you're doing okay. This one uh, didn't kill the model, unfortunately. Yeah, just a bit off-center. But yeah, carrying our in here. However, those Thunderers should be able to get some good... Actually, they missed a lot. Um, they should be able to get some good damage. And also the Slayers do. These guys... They count as infantry too, that's interesting. Um, so that's rough. And also, yeah, that bone giant shot did take out one of the cannon models. So that's that's actually very interesting. Um Damn, are the bone giants actually winning the Dardy duel? Because yeah, they're in perfectly good shape. So my thing is here, yeah, if you're the dwarves, you want to just like push up right now. Because you're losing the artillery duel. You got nothing to stay stay back here for. Just push, just move. Um, push up, start getting your fire onto uh, all this stuff. Especially, you especially want to focus your Bugman's Rangers fire onto these uh, Ushapti Grip Bows, if you can. Or the Bone Giants, whichever. Um, but especially the Ushapti Grip Bows. That's your priority target for your bows. And for your Blasting Charges, you want to get onto those Temple Guard. Or not Temple Guard, Tomb Guard, excuse me. Uh, but yeah. And also, you want to get your Slayers onto these um, Necronites. Honestly, if you're Dwarf Warriors, like, it's fine. Just go for it. Um, let them take that. But just keep these Slayers, like, sh like shaded here so you can do it. In my opinion, I think you still want to just push up. Uh, force the Necronites to then come into your... Like, try to sweep into your um, Warriors of Dragonfire Pass and your Bugman's Rangers. While your other stuff is already in range to keep firing. Really good summon here. Disrupting these uh, Miners of Blasting Charges. That's going to save your um, uh, Tomb Guard some grief. Uh, you want to, you really want to get these guys moving in here. How are we doing here? So yeah, these Carrion were able to chase off the cannon. Very good for them. These cannons... Um, wait, where's the... Uh, Okay, oh, they're being chased up there. Just the flag is staying there for some reason. It's weird. Um, otherwise, you're doing fine. Yeah, the dwarves... In my opinion, yeah, see, you're letting your range get too disrupted by this one Necronite unit that can just, like, slink back into the forest. So, if you want to... So, in my opinion, you're better off just, like, pushing up your range and get your fire onto these targets. Force the Necronites to, like, collapse in. Right? Because if they want to waste all their time trying to deal with a grind with a Dwarf Warrior, that's fine. Dwarf Warriors are super cheap. And your Necronites, I think they're like 1,400 gold value against like a 450 Dwarf Warrior. Let them grind against that while your range moves up and starts shooting their important stuff. Because, yeah, because they you just lost precious time with these ones, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, and also you don't want to get your stuff stacked up. But, um, so the Slayers chasing these guys, yeah, that's fine. You'll just let them do that. Just, especially if they can, like, get one model. Yeah, see, now they're, like, stuck in combat. If the door Tomb King player, unfortunately, like, misses this and doesn't pull him back, force them to pull back, then you're going to get really good value here. But, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, your Bugmans did get routed off by those bush, uh, Chosen of the Gods. Um, yeah, in my opinion, if you're the Thunderer, you want to prioritize the uh, Chosen of the Gods. Same thing if you're the, uh, actually, Purple Sun of Zeus. So let's see if it comes in and see if it does good value. How you doing? That's not bad. Okay, that was like decent value. The problem is Purple Sun, actually wait, can I remember? What, where's Arkin? Okay. Arkin, was this ugh, 1800 wins of magic for that much value? That's, uh, I don't know. Against Dwarves, I don't know if that's worth it still. But yeah, um, good work there, uh, getting the, routing those Thunders off. Yeah, and also yeah, these Carrion, like now that there's nothing to deal with them, like these Carrion can just um, chase off those routing units. Actually, do we have some cannons back online? Look at these heroes getting their cannons on. I think they got, what, two models left? Wait, where is... Okay, so they got two models left. Just, yeah, get your fire into the Necronites or something. Shoot at something. And, yeah, this is fantastic. Because now, right now, you have no peel. So what can happen is either the Ushati Grippos get stuck in combat with the Slayers and get their asses kicked. Or they try to chase back, but, like, that means they're not shooting. Which means they're not getting the value. So that's good. Uh, however, these Necronites are getting onto them. However, if the Necronites get stuck onto them, then that's, you know, tough titties. That's bad for them. Yeah. Bugman's Rangers, I think you want to just focus on... Focus on the Necronites now that you have Slayers onto them. Just try to get them down, get them crumbling, and get them killed. Not that they're lower value. 
Uh, otherwise, and now if I'm, I, oh, clutch skeleton summon. I was about to say just like squeeze them in there and get them onto those uh, Bishopti. But now, like, yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, really, really good summon. Just blocking up two. You got a summon here. This is just doesn't cost you anything except like you take, I think it's 200 for the item. But yeah, one summon is blocking up like 750 points of uh, dwarf infantry. Fantastic. Uh, you'll take that trade any day. Bone Giants are not that much different from Sanct uh, Satang when it comes to Arty Duels. Interesting. For some reason, I always thought that um, they actually struggled against Tomb Kings. But yeah, that's interesting. Or they struggled against uh, Dwarf Cannons. But yeah, interesting. I guess the more you know, I guess. So yeah, this Tomb Guard or... Um, honestly, if you want Tomb Guard, I just like put them in position the screen. Because your damage is right here. Like this is little trio of damage is all yours. How's that spell doing? It's doing okay. Although now it's doing a lot of friendly fire. That's rough. Ooh. Yeah, that's not good. Um, but otherwise, it's okay. I don't know. It's it, The problem is, like, it costs 1,800 wins of magic. 18 wins of magic. That's a really expensive spell. In my opinion, it's just not worth it. Like, honestly, you're better off just probably just spamming spirit leeches on the ground. Window. Like, you'll probably just get more value that way. But yeah, engine of the gods. Or the chosen of the gods, excuse me. Um, yeah, slayers can be okay. Especially, like, if they are going to be... Because the Bone Giant's not going to be able to kite away from them. Like, 32 speed against uh, 40 from the Slayers. Especially now that they're clumped up, that's actually going to be good value. Yeah, that's good work. Actually, solid damage. Actually, explosive damage if they're clumped up probably won't be too bad. But, um, especially if you're the Dwarves, they don't really have much. So, actually, wait, hold on a second. So, Balance of Power is even. Most of the dwarf range is like beat the hell, right? These thunders are routing. Uh, these core bugman's rangers, they're here, but they are in pretty rough shape. Like if you can get a rear charge with the carrying, you can do fine. And your necro knights are just chasing them off. They're beat up. The problem is now, like, what kills Grom Brindle? It's not gonna be your bone giants. Like I know they have armor piercing damage, but their combat stats are uh, abysmal. If you can, <laughs> I, I, I don't usually say this, but if you can kite with your bone giants, maybe you can do something. But yeah, that's uh, I actually am wondering what ki what kills Grom Bindle. Rom Rom Bindle. You brought the Rune Grax at Rune Axe too, which actually gives them a bit of a damage spike. Normally, when I see my people, see people just taking bare bones or maybe just with the flash bomb. But yeah, what kills Grom Bindle? Uh, Arkin's not gonna do it. That would be incredibly badass if Grom Bindle's able to drag this out, because like the Bojopti are almost out of ammunition. Bone Giant, this guy's just got one left. How many do you have? You have three, but you're surrounded by Slayers right now. Yeah, now Grom Brindle's about to just beat your ass. I think Grom Brindle might actually just, like, drag this out. Because, yeah, you don't have a... Damn. Yeah, see, this is actually, like, the ultimate. Because I remember, I have, like, one of the first videos I ever put up. Was me against, uh, as Tomb Kings into, um, Dwarves. I was able to kill, like... He brought a few range pieces. I think it was like Thunder and stuff like that. I was able to shut down their range effectively enough where not a single one of his range pieces, like his bolt throwers, his thunderers, none of them paid for themselves. Not a single one. But he still beat me because I couldn't kill his hero hammer. Just the single entities are too tough. I honestly think you need to go with, um, what's it called? The um, Sneaky Snakes. Like a sna uh, Sepulchral Stalker kite. Because, yeah, otherwise, like, you just can't kill the single entities. Because uh, the uh, Cumbrian War Sphinxes, they're anti-infantry, so ostensibly they're supposed to be able to do well against like uh, uh, dwarf single, uh, single, single like foot characters, but they just don't. They just don't do enough damage. But yeah, Grom Brindle, look here, somehow covered in blood. Uh, skeletons bleeding, I guess, I don't know. He just hits so hard, he makes even skeletons bleed, you know? He's just that badass. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, Tomb King's like, I mean, Ark in the Black, he's not going to do shit. What's he going to do, cast Purple Sun on the Grom Brindle? Like... Yeah, this is rough. Yeah, that's a big part of why it's so tough tough for the uh, Tomb Kings, because their infantry beats yours. They can clear out your your chaff so well with blasting charges. Their range can do really well against yours, and uh, their single entities are just so hard for you to clear out. Yeah, tanky, like, single entities are just really tough for uh, Tomb Kings to deal with. They have to use the snakes, I think. That's the only chance they've got. Otherwise, like, at this point, eh, you got a skeleton summon. I'll we'll take it. Although, have they used the uh, Ushalti summon? I'm pretty sure they haven't used it yet, but even then, I don't think it's going to be around for long enough to like deal with like these two guys, especially when you have some Slayers buffering. Yeah, 
Yeah, Poros Bushapti. Such a cool unit, too. The Tomb King constructs look so awesome. <laughs> I, lo I love how they fall down and just get thump. Yeah, see, look at this guy. Just thump. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. But yeah, um, the single entity core in particular, just nothing. Even they, if even if they killed everything, if everything else was just dropped dead right now, um, Grombrindle can not take this out. So yeah, I think I have two like key things I want to talk about. For one for the dwarf and one for the Tomb King side and how like to approach this matchup. Because I think for the dwarves, like since the bone giants actually do that well into the artillery, I think just don't take artillery. Just just take uh, take that artillery. That's um I think sixteen hundred gold. Dwarf cannons are eight hundred piece, right? So that's sixteen hundred gold. Just put that into like uh more like corlers or more uh, like ranged infantry, like thunderers, um corlers, stuff like that, and then just like push up and then just use your range to deal with the boshanti, like the uh, Tomb King constructs. Like you shot the great bows, um, um, what's it called? The um, Saboko stalkers, like stuff like that. Yeah, just shoot them. Yeah. Wait, how is the balance of power even? What? Oh right, Ark in the Black, because he's not only, he's your lord, but he's also your caster, and he is healthy, and the game really overvalues um, healthy casters. Because like, yeah, I'm just gonna fast forward because like, yeah, Arkin Arkin can't beat this. Tomb Guard can't beat this either. It's like just Grom Grindle will just wear him down. Look at these guys. Skeleton summon, okay. That's nice. Get four cannons, got it? I mean if you want to, sure. <laughs> the problem is like if the um skeleton chariots aren't any good. I don't think they do well in the dwarves. They just don't take out our clear out armored infantry well enough. Especially because dwarves, like dwarf warriors, longbeards, they all have charge defense versus large. So you need to get side shots, but even then, they have really good mass for as far as infantry goes. And skeleton chariots, in my experience, they kind of struggle to uh, cycle charge. They can do okay. It's just like it's just tough. Um, you need to be really on top of your micro with them, and then they can maybe they can like pay for themselves. But they won't like outdo their value even if you micro them incredibly well. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, for tomb kings, I think it's like a sepulchral stalker kite. You take like four of them. With like some Bushapti as well. Um, and then just like kite with them. I think you want to help with that. And you hope you're on like a large map too. Because otherwise like this is tough. I think another way since you're on River Amexon. I think another way would have been like. You could maybe like use like Cameron War Sphinxes. And like an Ushapti like flank overload. And just come in through the tree line. So they can't shoot you and then collapse in. So that could help. Yeah their chariots are not AP. They're um. They still do okay. They're just not amazing. Alright, we'll just fast forward just to get this done. Yep. So yeah, GG. Dwarves win. Um, I think that really did show um, the strength of this matchup for the Dwarves. Because that single entity core was just like, just there's nothing to kill it. Um, you still got good value, especially the Bone Giants, especially because they traded well into artillery. So that was nice to see. Uh, the Necro Knights, yeah, they just they couldn't, um, they just got dragged down by the Slayers. That was rough for them. Shot the Chosen of the Gods did really well. I think if you're the Dwarves, yeah, I think just drop the cannons. Put the 600 gold, 1600 gold value into like some more range. Maybe like a, another Thunderer or something like that. Another Thunderer, maybe another Slayer, something of that nature. Another Bugman's Ranger. So it gets, just get more range, range infantry for you and then just push up and then just shoot the uh, Bone Giants. Because like if you drop these, if you drop these cannons and just get like range infantry with them, the Bone Giants have nothing to shoot, right? They're, they're, they're just like, because these things are 1600 gold each. One of these costs the same as two cannons. So I think they're 1600 each. So, but they have, they'll have nothing to shoot. So it's like, yeah, you, I was, at that point, you just take out so much of their value. Um, and then the Chosen of the Gods, like just with volume of fire with like Thunderers and like uh, Buckman's Rangers, they'll just, they'll be dragged down even though they have 90 armor. So um, yeah, in my opinion, that's the approach you want to go with. Uh, with Tomb Kings, I think, yeah, you want to go Sepulchral Stalkers, uh, Kite, because they're the ones who can actually do like decent damage against infantry, or like the best you can, like a foot character. Here, let me just like... Let me go, hold on, just bear with me really quickly, uh, let's get you, let's get you, let's go with you, um, do you want to take Ark in the Black? Hmm, yeah, you'll take Ark in the Black, just take, like, I don't know, Spirit Leech, Doom and Darkness, try to give you some stuff, uh, you don't want you, 
Uh, don't want you. If you play him well, you won't get him below 50% HP. Uh, yeah, I'll try to do with that. And then we'll get... Red Dwarfs. Um, Shred Thor. Do they take his anvil a lot in his matchups? Because I know the guy I took took him on his anvil. You don't need to. Uh, just do... Where is it? Rune of Wrath and Rune? Rune of Salonis. There you go. Boom. I just want to get my Glacial Lake. Yeah. I just want to get just like a sense of how much damage they do. Because I think that they actually do decent damage against like single en the dwarf single entities. So you could get good work from them. Just make sure we're good here. Okay, sorry, let me get chat up really quick again. Okay, so let's get our sneaky snakes. Good thing that they are vanguarded, so that should make this faster. Like, if you can just get, like... Get a concave. Let's take fire of will off. Man, we can just leave you there. We'll test three. Like, if you can just get a bunch of these guys, let's see how much they do. Yeah, that's good damage. I'll take that. Especially since he does have missile resistance too. 15% missile resistance. 25% physical resistance. That magic damage punches through. I think, and it, in my experience, it does well against, like, even if you just took him on foot, it does just as well. So I do think... Now, obviously, like, the dwarves have a whole army around him, so you have to clear out the infantry. But I think if you have the snakes for kiting, Boshapti for to clear out the infantry, and, like, stuff like that, you can maybe do it. But otherwise, yeah, this is a tough matchup. Yeah, I do think kiting with, like, Sneaky Snakes and uh, Ushapti Great Bows, that's your best bet. Um, anyway, going on to our next replay. I think this was our recent one. So, yeah, this one is our next one. Actually, wait, hold on a second. This is the exact same battle from a different angle. Oops. We'll just exit out of this one really quickly because we already saw this one. Okay, let's just quit replay. Yep. Load replay. Next one is this one. Okay, so we got MG Par versus the best. Yeah, Warriors of Chaos. Slaneshi flavored Warriors of Chaos. That's going to be cool. Against the uh, dwarves. Okay, he brought Pete Gate Guard again. That's awesome. Actually, wait, is this the same build as before? It looks. Near identical. Because, like, you had the one Iron Drake and the one Iron Drake Torpedoes. The one Thunderer. A couple of Quarrelers. Giant Slayers and Peak Gate Guard. Yeah, it looks pretty similar. Yeah, still a cool build. Alright. So, let's take a look here. For the Warriors of Chaos, we have Azazel as our leadership. Azazel coming in here with the Lash of Slanesh. The Acquiescence as well. Solid single target debuff. Haven't we seen this one? This one I don't think we've seen. It's your signal kitchen sink build? Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, this one we did have not seen. We saw the uh, Dwarves uh, Tomb King one again. That's why I exited out of it. And now we're on the uh, Dwarves uh, Wars of Chaos one, which uh, we have not seen yet. Uh, so yeah, Azazel coming in here. We got Acquiescence and Lash of Slanish. He also has his uh, Blissful Rapture, which these two spells are really cheap and easy to spam a lot of. So Blissful Rapture can be uh, quite nice. Um, otherwise, yeah, just really good combatant. He's got Dominating Aura. What is this again? Increases infect inten intensity increases, but each enemy unit in range with leadership wavering alone. I don't think this is that good into uh, dwarves because their leadership is so good. I don't think you're going to get that much value out of this. So in my opinion, you're better off dropping it. But otherwise, um, similar thing. I think this is your infantry is too stacked up. You want to spread them out more. Um, like get some of them into this uh, tree line and just have them flank around. Get like one of them into here just to flank around so that we can just try to put pressure on them. Otherwise, you're just like you're bottlenecking yourself when you don't need to, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Marauder Great Weapons, Marauder Great Weapons, Marauder Great Weapons. So you got four of those. Uh, you also have Chaos Warriors of Slanesh with the Hell Scourges. These guys are the Slaneshi favorite Chaos Warriors. It's also nice and purple. They got them big old shields and they got the whips. whips. Um, really, really good staying power with these guys. Good leadership, really good melee defense. So yeah, these guys are a really solid anchor piece. Um, you also have the uh, Soul of Damnation 
Yeah, in my actually wait, how is the range working on this one? So in my opinion, if you have enough range, I think you have enough range where you can just park them like right back here and you'll be able to keep firing over and that's actually going to do good work for you. So yeah, in my opinion, you could have just gone with that. They also have an exalted hero on a chariot. Um, if you can just keep, uh, if you can just keep on your micro and keep your cycle charging with them and stuff like that, you can get good value at these guys. They do have armor piercing and a good damage. How's their mass again? Fifteen hundred. That's okay. Um, you should be able to do good with them. Just gotta keep up on your micro. Um, otherwise, we got a couple chaos warhounds here. These guys are good. What you want to do is just keep them hidden in the tree line and then wait until the uh, dwarf player has to um, has to use the um, what's it called. Use the giant slayers to like peel up, and then you can move them down. Uh, my expectation was the marauders were going to get bombed and run away just using them to screen. Um, in that case, I think it's fine to get like a couple of them up there. I just think that, um, like, especially if you have chaos warrior hell scourges, like you're spending extra for them, I think that you're uh, not going to. Also, if you're wanting to use them to screen, in my opinion, just use the uh, shielded marauders then, because in my, uh, to my knowledge, they have a bit more staying power, so they'll at least be able to screen better. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. And then also, but I still think at least getting like one on each flank flanking around would be a better utility, in my opinion. Uh, but also, yeah, Marauder Horsemen throwing axes, they can do some solid work here. You definitely do want to, oh, yeah, that's rough. They got some really good damage into these ones. I do think, oh, just another tech, just for future reference. With Azazel, you can take Pavane of Slanesh and cast this onto these guys. You will rampage them into the nearest melee unit and you can just kill them easily. Like, Pavane of Slanesh, like, Rampage abilities like that, targetable Rampage abilities, are just, like, the bane of Gyrocopters. So, in my opinion, if you're going against Dwarves and you're taking Azazel, you want to, you really want to take that as insurance against the Helicopters, because that way you can just, like, you can save your cannon from some damage. Um, also, yeah, I do think parking it back here, you, I'm pretty sure you'd still have enough range to get your damage in, while being able to, um, avoid it from getting shot by the uh, cannons. But otherwise, yeah, for the Dwarves, you get Gyro Slay Giant Slayers, Cannons, Thunderers, Iron Drakes with the Flamethrowers, Iron Drakes with the Troll Hammer Torpedoes, a couple Corollers, uh, some Dwarf Warriors here, and um, the Hammers, a PK Guard. Unfortunately, they're getting beat up by the Soul of uh, Damnation. However, uh, it should be shut down fairly soon by those cannons, so at least you'll get some work out of them. But yeah, that is unfortunate, and the Blasting Charges should be able to get some solid value. Um, so my question here for this build is, how is it going to deal with the um, Chaos Warriors? If you really do have to rely on Thoric... And killing the other stuff faster. Um, in my opinion, do you have Runa Slonis? Runa Slonis? Runa Slonis? Yeah, Runa Slonis. You really want to focus on, like, pick one one of these uh, chariots as soon as they come in. And then just focus it with, like, your Thunderers and your uh, Trollheimer Torpedoes. And get that Runa Slonis on them, too, uh, so they, um, they uh, get stuck. Yeah. Flamethrower's coming in here. Doing massive damage onto these Marauders. Fantastic work from them. Really, really good stuff to see. Yeah, Chaos Ray Health Scourges, so yeah, they're swarming in. Blasting Charge did some solid work onto those uh, great Marauders. Unfortunately, the Health Scourges, yeah, hmm. Yeah, the Dwarves looks like they are going to get swarmed a bit. So you want to get these Dwarf Warriors onto them and then peel back these Corollers. And these Troll Hammer Torpedoes, you need to get them onto these um, Exalted Heroes. I know they're anti-large, but they're not that efficient into something like Marauder Horsemen. You want to get them into the single entities. Yeah, those Chariots are definitely the bane of your uh, Dwarves existence. You really want to take them out quickly. Chaos Warriors, um, I wonder, do their shields count at this point? Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna get value that way. Um, get okay, solid Rune of Wrath and Ruin about to come down here. Get some good damage here. You'll take that chip, chip damage in there. You really want to take as much as you can get from these guys, because otherwise they're tough. Yeah, Thunderers, yeah, and Cannons being compromised, that's rough. Just from one Chariot. And unfortunately, these Iron Drakes are not compromised as well. Yeah. I think for the Dwarf uh, Formation, you do want to be a bit more spread out, so at least your range units have some more space to operate in. Oh, you didn't notice they were on chariots? Okay, that's funny. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You just want to be a bit um, cognizant of that. But at least you got one of them routed off by the pink door. That's good. Um, but yeah, I do think like uh, spreading out your formation as doors a bit more is going to be better. You'll have more space, meaning that the enemy has more ground to cover if they want to shut down your stuff, which gives you more time to get your uh, your shots in with your range. Yeah, otherwise, Thoric, he's just grinding with some of these Chaos Warriors. Uh, solid cast from the last Slanish down there. That's also going to buff up the melee attack of all these units, making them trade better in the infantry guide. Really, really solid from them. I do think if the is a good unit here, um, you just got to be really smart, especially because he's relatively small, but he's also really fast. So the dwarf range, that's something you can dodge uh, fairly effectively if you're on it with your micro. 
Unfortunately, Troll Hammer Torpedoes did take some good, uh, a lot of damage. Iron Drakes, they're gonna get actually a pretty fat volley onto these uh, Warhounds. We can see it. Let's see them. Very, very nice damage. They're gonna be routed off really quickly, although these Warhounds are able to get in, unfortunately for them. Uh, you do have the Brimstone Guns coming in here. Uh, they should be able to get. If, if you, do you have your bombs? Do you have your bombs? You have your bombs. You really want to get your bombs like right onto these guys. That's a juicy, juicy target. Otherwise, uh, or into these guys if you want, or you can just let the work grind against them the whole metal, uh, battle. Yeah, otherwise, Warriors of Chaos, um, actually, the dwarves look like they're actually taking, uh, the lead. I think it's because these exalted heroes are in a pretty rough state, and also the Hellcam got taken. A lot of Warriors of Chaos this turn. Yeah, Warriors of Chaos, they're pretty popular, because, um, especially because they're just such a versatile faction, because they have access to, like, the Mark units and stuff like that. And these days, they have healing. So, yeah, these days, I know, yeah, Warriors of Chaos is really popular. Uh, Chaos Hounds coming in here, really nice, just blocking down that infantry, uh, infantry, especially the Quarlers, that's like their, like, one online range unit that you bogged down, so that's pretty nice from them. Otherwise, did you guys get your bombs off? <laughs> Didn't get their bombs off, that's unfortunate. Yeah, Lash is so nice coming down, just some chipping away. Um, yeah, Pit Gate Guard, probably getting some good value here, because they've at least been able to get, get on these chariots and stick on them. Especially in how these chariots are kind of getting stuck on the cannon model, so that's pretty nice for them. So yeah, they're getting good work done. Uh, what else? How, how are the dwarves doing here? So Zazel's taking some damage. Thunderers are now back online. They're gonna get some point blank shots into this guy. Hopefully they can. Yep, solid work there. You really want to just do as much as you can. Um, in my opinion, if you're this, uh, if you're the Chaos Warrior, you want to like charge them in with the dwarves or chase off the cannon. Actually, both is fine. Um, in my opinion, I think it's better to charge into them because uh, they're just threatening, more threatening to you right now. Uh, into the Thunderers. Slanesh always must take the big mirror shard nuke spell. Mirror shard nuke spell on the dwarves. Um, it can be really fun. In my experience, it's just like you're better off with like Pavane of Slanesh because the rampage is just so reliable. It's such a reliable tech against uh, gyro bombers. But yeah, if you want to take like Pavane for just as insurance, and if they don't bring enough um, gyro bombers, then you take the mirror shard. That can be really fun. Um, yeah, this uh, hero on his chariot is still doing fine. Just psycho charging these dwarf warriors, they're not going to do much to him. Thoric has spent this whole battle just grinding against the same uh, Chaos Warrior Hellscript unit. Uh, yeah, these guys are just so durable. Like, look at how low HP they are, and they're still just holding on strong. Otherwise, yeah, Marauder Great Weapons. Yeah, they got good work onto these Thunderers. So the dwarves are still ahead on the balance of power. I think a lot of that's because Thoric is so healthy. My question is, like... Yeah, I think they'll be able to grind this out, because, like, you still have two healthy, uh, Hell Scourges. Or, actually, no, you have one healthy Hell Scourge. These guys are routing. These guys are still are pretty beat up. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Because with Thoric, Azazel, all Azazel has to do is just, like, cycle charge him. If he can just get Thoric bogged down in, like, a crowd of infantry, and they can cycle charge like, you can just feed them, like, one by one. Get your Hell Scourges onto these, uh, Giant Slayers just to wear down the last few models of them. And then get these Marauders onto the Thoric and just, like, drag them down and then just cycle charge with, um, Azazel. And you can just, like, keep on spamming, uh, where is it, Acquiescence onto him when you want to, like, right now. And then you come in, you'll deal your damage, and then you pull out, and then you just let the uh, infantry grind. Yeah, otherwise, like, do the dwarves have any... Yeah, dwarves don't have any reinforcements for coming, really, this is what you get. Decent damage, a little chip onto the, uh, dwarf warriors. Yeah, it really doesn't do that much. Because that was a relatively, like, blocked up unit of Dwarf Warriors, and yeah, it only did a little bit. Hey, how you doing, Damage Rush? You doing okay. Okay, so you're right behind, uh, Thor. Okay, Thor, turn around. I got his shots onto you. Um, yeah, my opinion, if you're Zazel, now pull out now and just let them grind, uh, let your infantry grind in the Thor. If you're gonna cast spells, make sure to get, like, 100 meters away, so that way he's, uh, his, um, where is it? Locus of power? His locus of power doesn't do damage into you. Because right now with Azazel, you are pretty low in HP. So yeah, in my opinion, just stay far away. Let your infantry grind him down. Throw it down. And then, um, just keep coming in, like, periodically to get your hits in. And, like, see, you get, you land him, you get your hit, pull out. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, this is gonna be a really good rune of wrath and ruin. Very nice. Uh, got some good damage onto both of these guys. So yeah, this Hell is really what you want to worry about, because, yeah, they stay, they have a lot of sting power. Um, do you have any ammo left? No ammo left. Uh, just rear charge. Just keep on rear charging, and, like, try to do that. 
Um, Roar's great weapons just keep on charging back in and try to deal with them. Especially now that his, um... Yeah, see, like, he's taking miscast damage from it. That's rough. Like, how long is the duration on this again? 25 seconds? You have enough time where, like, you can get out of range, cast it, so that way at least, like, your Chaos Warriors and stuff like that are getting your hits onto him, and then you charge in. Because otherwise, that actually could be what, um, what Storic really is literally down. Because... Yeah, otherwise, because without his Hazel Cycle Charging, it's actually probably going to be tough for them to kill Thoric. Because your Hell Scourges are very durable, they just, they don't deal that much damage until like 130 armor, and even like 50 melee defense, that's going to be tough for them to drag down. Okay, unless, if you can get, um, if you can just get a few more hits onto him, in my opinion, pull out and then just Cycle Charge again from the rear. Um, especially since actually by now, what's your cooldown? Cooldown? 120 seconds? Okay, it should be at least a little bit. Yes, balance power coming now into the words of Chaos' favor, now that Thoric is starting to take some hits. So, yep, yeah, pull back with Azazel. I think refresh your, get your cycle charge. Try to get a rear charge onto him. Guess a rune of speed on himself? Okay. Yeah. However, we're starting to see some Marauders routing. However, this these Chaos health scourges are just totally fine. So yeah, just keep them in there, just grinding. Especially now that he's buffs up, just wait until that's done, and then come back in. I think you have, what, like, 12 seconds left? Yeah, until Rune of Speed is done, and then just charge back in. Yeah, just don't cast another spell while you're in range. Okay, because then if he gets a hit onto you after that miscast damage, then you might actually be in trouble. Because if he gets killed and you'd like to get that leadership uh, bomb onto them from losing your lord, then you're in trouble. Because Azazel's a demon. His demonic instability coming, which means... If you get him below his leadership, he's just done. Okay, how we doing? Okay, about the same HP now. 900 to 1,000. Okay, Thoric just took a big hit. So yeah, he should be routing off, and uh, yeah, Azazel takes it. So yeah, really, really good stuff. Very nice, close battle. Um, Yeah, this just goes to show just how good Thoric is. Like, 2,500 damage dealt his gold value. Like, this, like, Thoric, he's incredibly tanky. Because on his, on his anvil, he has 90 leadership and like 120 armor base. That's not even with buffs. And then um, really good HP pool. And also, he's like deceptively good at like dealing damage. Even just in melee, because he's like majority armor piercing on like the regular rune lords. So yeah, he's just such a good lord right now. Um, Peak gate guard. Okay, they actually got they actually got a lot of value, considering that the, hell, the, um, the soul of damnation actually got really good work onto them. So yeah, really awesome to see. Uh, Giant Slayer's got an okay value. He didn't pay for himself, unfortunately. Cannon did very well. He did get, got good work onto this whole damnation and those uh, chariots. Gyrobar, Gyrocopter did all right. Yeah, the Iron Dregs, unfortunately, they kind of got uh, uh, disrupted pretty quickly. Uh, Thunderers did pay for themselves. Very, very nice. And the Quarrelers, they did an okay job. Um, otherwise, your Dwarf Warriors, they're there to be holding infantry. Miner paid for himself. Very nice. I saw him good, do good work onto the one of the great weapon um, dudes. Uh, otherwise, Azazel, we've got, uh, 20, 25%. Oh, yeah. Also, he has 25% physical resistance on his, uh, anvil. Uh, so, yeah. Really, really tough. And also, of course, like, 35% spell resistance because he's a dwarf. So, yeah. Just incredibly hard to kill. But, yeah. Azazel did fantastically well. Um, 2,400 value. Very, very good. Soul of Damnation did actually pretty all right, considering how quickly he got shut off. That PK guard gave him a lot of value. Uh, Exalted Heroes, you guys actually did pretty well. Especially this one. This one definitely paid for himself and then some. Uh, your Chaos Warriors, uh, just really good in that infantry grind. They're just such a good unit. Very durable, lasting for so long. It is so weird how for Slanesh, like, their best units are their heavily armored ones. Just very strange. Oh, my Strong Axes, one of them did well. Um, yeah, the Marauders, they did okay. They did, a couple of them did good. A couple other ones, I think these guys got roughed up by, like, the blasting charges and such. And the Iron Drakes, too. I think this was the one that was on the flank that got, like, just roasted by the Iron Drakes. And then uh, one of these other ones was the uh, blasting charges one. The Hounds did alright. They didn't get the damage value back, but they had some pretty solid disruption, so you'll take that. Otherwise, yeah, good. My main thing is, like, for the Dwarves, I think, like, spreading out your formation more will give your, um, your ranged assets more breathing room and make them harder to shut down. So, yeah, I think that would be the biggest uh, thing that I would say. Slanish always mistake the big mirror shards, nuke, spell in the doors. Oh yeah, talked about that uh, a bit earlier. Um, so yeah, there's that battle. And now we've got, actually wait, this is the same one. I think that's, that might be all of our battles, I think. Hold on a second, let me double check to make sure I'm not missing somebody, because I don't want to miss anybody's battle. 
yeah, I think that's everybody's uh, battle. Hopefully I didn't miss you guys. Uh, thank you guys for coming around. Let me see who's the winner. Looks like we got a three-way tie, actually. Between Incars, um, Golf, and uh, Surprise, or MG Par. So Incars, MG Par, and Surprise. Uh, you guys got a tiebreaker here. How do I want to handle this? Actually, wait, hold on. One's plus one, because you both got three, one. What does Buchholz mean? The median book hole system is used to break ties in Swiss tournaments. The value displayed in the standings table is the sum of a player's opponent's score. Sorry, this is my first time hosting a Swiss tournament. Okay, so we're looking at the book holds thingy. The tiebreaker is between Incars and MG Park. Do you guys want to just play another match to settle uh, to break the tie? Because you both got the same uh, level. Hopefully, you guys are still in chat. Tournament must go on. Very, very nice. Okay, so one of you guys can get a lobby up and just make sure you have a spectator slot for me. Is he already to beat me once? Ah, no. Not with that attitude. Let's just, uh... Yeah, if you guys are fine, Incor seems to be up for another battle. Okay, I think Incor, this is your lobby. Should be spectating. Okay, awesome. We got our two finalists here getting their battles ready. Uh, we can just keep on River Amex on. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to quickly get some water while they're setting up their armies, and I will be right back in just a second. All right, I'm back. So, so far we saw, we saw a lot of dwarves. We saw a lot of warriors of chaos. We saw some chaos dwarves and uh, high elves too. It was pretty cool. So we have dwarf manufacturing. Yeah, dwarves are pretty cool. Especially something like the Iron Drakes, Peak Gate Guard, and stuff like that. Pretty sick units. Yeah, and hopefully some of the, like, feedback I've been giving has been good. I'm not quite as experienced as a human boy, so, uh, yeah, hopefully I'm up to snuff. Okay, looks like they changed the map to Ash Plains. That's totally fine. Yeah, Ash Plains is Ash Plains is a solid map.
So it looks like we got High Elves and Norska as our final matchup. That's pretty cool. A bit of a rematch from earlier. Yeah, big thing with Norska is I think you really do want to, like, swarm. Use your AoE damage, like your Burning Heads and your uh, Sea Fangs, to try to clear out that front line. And also, like, swarm the flanks, because you can get more cheap, like, mobile mobile assets than the High Elves can. Because High Elves are, you know, they're an expensive faction by nature. So, if you can get that handled, you should be in a pretty solid spot. Well, also, I do think you still want to have some, um, like, Javelins or something like that, as, like, a piece, uh, like, some insurance against... Um, uh, Imrik. Yeah, especially because if they do bring Imrik, you really do want to, like, try to just clear out the rest of the army and then settle them for last. Yeah, and if with, like, Wolfric, if you can snipe out that caster, that's fantastic. Especially if she's on horse, because she's a bit easier to hit than if she's on foot. But, um, yeah, otherwise, your big thing is trying to keep him alive, let him use his sea fangs, use your burning heads and such to try to clear out that, um, that infantry, and then, uh, at that point, you should be fine. Okay, taking a look at these builds. Got Wolfric, got a couple Marauder Champions here. We got a Deathcaster, probably Spirit Leech, Fate Abuna, if I had to guess. A couple Trolls, lots of Berserkers, a couple Javelins, lots of Marauders. So, yeah, this is a fat infantry-heavy build, so you really do want to swarm here. I actually think you want to go, um... Berserkers stacked with their trolls on the flanks, flanking around the flanks. So that way your trolls can like countercharge any cavalry that tries to come in. And then I have your champions uh like tanking up with the grinding up in the front with marauders like just strewn about that place. Just try to like flank around and stuff like that. Just basically try to get into that back line. Meanwhile, for the high elves, what do we got? Looks like we got four reaver archers here. We got uh what are these reavers? Reavers. Okay, four reaver archers, two reavers. Very actually lots of mobility here. Um that's interesting. They went like with mass mobility while they went mass infantry for Norse Scouts. Funny. Uh, otherwise, we got what? Spearmen, Spear, Silver Guard, Silver Guard, Spearmen. And then you got uh, a couple archers. I love them. Sea Guard. What do you got? Long Sea Guard, Long Sea Guard. We also got Sisters of Avalorn. Very good. So you want to put your burning head on top of this guy, on top of this one. Um, and also the uh, Shadows Caster, who's got what do you got? Got it. Penumbral Pendulum and Melkos Mystifying Miasma. Yeah, honestly, in my opinion, just use these on the Marauder Champions. Use your Archers on the Berserkers and the um, uh, the Trolls, and you should be fine. And also just, like, cycle charge the hell out of the Berserkers with your Illyrian Reavers and get your Illyrian Reavers onto these uh, Marauder Hunter Javelins, and you should be in good shape. Uh, and also, we have Tyrion on foot. Holy shit. Okay, check out Tyrion. Look at this guy. Okay, so he's coming in. His big thing is, like, pfft, massive stats. Well armored, massive stats. Um, really good. Phantom Repost even makes his stats even bigger. Uh, Sunfang. Actually, Sunfang, since they brought Berserker, Sunfang actually could have some uh, teeth here. So that can be good. And also his Heart of Avalon giving you that heal when he gets below 25% HP. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting build. Again, I do think you do want to spread out. Like, spread out your spread out your spears a little bit wider. Spread these out wider. Put you in the back and reserve so you can move him to wherever you need him to be. And have these archers spread out more. Because that way, otherwise, like... I mean, you, they didn't bring Burning Head, but you do have... Where is it? Sea Fang. That can end up yeah, hitting multiple of your uh, assets. Instead of um, uh, minimizing that damage. If you spread them out, you can kind of minimize how much damage those spells do. Otherwise, we got Fate of Muna and Doom of Darkness. In my opinion, just save up your feet of fate of units to uh, take out that get these sisters of Avalon. Um, that's a bit. That's your big target for them. Otherwise, you don't have much else that are good targets. Silver Guard is definitely not a good target for it because that spell resistance. Uh, Tyrion's a single entity, and Reavers are too cheap for fate of units to be good against. So, in my opinion, just like yeah, uh, put it on the Silver Guard or sisters of Avalon and Lord of Sea Guard. Those are your best targets, as far as I can tell. Otherwise, yeah, I think you want, like, this, these three cores, you want them further out to the flank. And, yeah, get this one further out to the flank. And, like, have these guys come up with your Marauder Champions, like, grinding in the front. And these guys, um, in my opinion, like, have these Marauders, like, like onto these Spears. These Champions onto these guys. Try to force path them to the other Marauders, the center Marauders, through into onto those Spearmen. And, yeah, the problem is, like, yeah, they're taking a lot of shots in the approach. And use these Marauders, in my opinion, to just, like, screen off the infantry. Because you don't have any, cat, like, wolves or anything, like, skin wolves, to try to contend with the uh, mobility. So, otherwise, like, they have massive mobility and they have vantage here. So, yeah, in my opinion, you're better off that way. Um, now, it's actually, 
at this point, since, unless they dedicate their Reavers, like, you probably want to get your Protect Your Caster, otherwise you'll lose your magic really fast, because Tyrion's on foot. He's not in a position to help uh, the uh, Caster. So, yeah, rough spot for him. What's that? Missed it. Melkos, but they got something to do damage against uh, him. So, anyway, so we got the Marauders onto the center Spearman. That's fine. In my opinion, you want to, um, as soon as you can snipe out that Caster, you want to get your, uh, your, uh, your boats onto him. Unfortunately, yeah, the Reavers, they can just, like, charge onto these, uh, these are javelins and then just pull out. Although that's when at least the berserker, your berserker has gone onto them and stuff like that. But um, yeah. What is this? Uh, Penumbra pendulum. I'm guessing onto those berserkers. Oh, actually, oh, I did not see that. You had your berserkers and your marauder stacked onto them. That's that's really good value. Uh, you really want to avoid doing that. Like again, you're stacking them and again. That just gives them like easy pendulum value, easy money. And again, you're like nullifying your own like uh, numbers advantage here because high elves they you really want to avoid swarming them. So, or you want to be able to swarm them. So, yeah, in my opinion, you really do want to get, like, your Marauders, like, should be on here. Your Marauder Champions can be ch uh, trading with the Sovereign Guard. And, yeah, and these Berserkers kind of, unfortunately, left a little bit idle here. Otherwise, how are we doing here? Tyrion, he's doing fine. Like, those trolls, the problem is those trolls aren't going to be able to actually do that well against them. Uh, where's the Shadow Scaster? She's right here. Uh, you probably want to get uh, Wolfric onto him again, just to keep it from being able to get... Boat cast, nice boat cast. Between that and the Fate of Buner, you're getting some really fat damage onto this expensive um, Sisters of Avalon unit, so that's very nice. Uh, otherwise, Balance of Power looks like it's slightly in the head uh, High Elf's favor, or um, Norska's favor. I think that's because of the damage done to the uh, Mage. Um, the Balance of Power tends to really, really uh, lean, uh, weigh heavy on the caster characters. Yeah, Wolfric again, he's coming in here looking, he's uh, smelling blood right now. He's coming in here onto this uh, Mage of Shadows. If he can just get, like, two or three hits onto her, then he's he's golden. However, she now has, like, a lot of spear buffering that it's going to be trouble for, uh, tough for him to go through. He might honestly just want to, like, cycle charge Tyrion here, now that Tyrion's stuck in some Marauders. Yeah, the Berserker should actually be able to deal with the uh, Spearman now. But if he's got a Sunfang coming up, what's the uh, 90 seconds? So you, I think you have, like, another 30 seconds till Sunfang comes up. You just want to get that onto the Sis of Avalon, just clear them off, just get them done. So that way you don't have to worry about their ammo anymore. Because if you they still have half their ammunition left, that's a lot of damage output. Yeah, trolls are coming in here. They've a little beat up by those reavers, but at least they get something. However, for the high elves, like you do have still have a lot of reavers at your disposal. In my opinion, um, yeah, just chase off these javelins, it's smart. And more other words, yeah, my being just like keep cycle charging all these guys. Like they're like cycle charge the trolls, rear charges trolls, especially because you can chase them off with their low leadership. The berserkers are super lightly armored. Unfortunately, oh that caster, that's actually a really good get for them with the uh, assist of Avalon and the Law of the Sea Guard. We're able to snipe that caster. He's riding off here before he could get another unit cast off. That's very, very nice for them. Uh really strong pendulum cast, got onto the berserkers, uh Bur berserkers and the marauders, and a uh, little bit of those marauder champions as well, took one of them a bit. But, um, yeah, if I'm the High Elves, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Uh, your Archers are going to be able to do really good work against those uh, Marauder Berserkers. Uh, you have Pen your Shadows Caster still in pretty good shape. Um, and even though Wolfric is tough against her, you have a lot of Spears that you can just use for buffering. And uh, so, yeah. Where do we put the replays in? You can either DM them to me or just put them in the, uh, the channel where the, um, the Attorney Opponent channel. Any of those is fine. Boatcast went down here onto these Lawven Sea Guard and these Sisters of Avalorn. That's just does really good damage for them, so that's nice. You might be able to route off these sisters. Your sisters have such good leadership for like a range unit. I think they have 82 base. Yeah, they're really tough to dislodge. But yeah, look at these champions still holding on, getting shots off. Look at that. What are they shooting at? Berserkers or trolls? Berserkers. Eh, either one's fine. Yeah, the High Elves just have so much range uh, mobility still in line here. Reaver is chasing off these uh, Marauders, that's fine. Uh, another Pendulum cast down here, got some solid damage onto these champions, getting some decent work into them. The champions are going to be the toughest thing to dislodge, just like keep on spamming the Pendulums onto them. Because Pendulum's not amazing right now, it's just okay. But yeah, and yeah, just keep shooting the uh, Berserkers, you can just shoot them dead with the uh, Reaver Archers. What else we got here? Um... So the saving grace for Norska is your Marauder Champions are actually doing a good job of just grinding down this infantry. Like, this Silver Guard finally uh, get ground down. And, uh, what do we get? So these, you still have these Silver Guard half health, which for this stage of the game is pretty nice. 
So they're going to be like a nice anchor piece. Tyrion is still really healthy, and his sisters of Avalon hasn't popped off yet, I don't think. He's doing great. These spears are still holding on. Uh, these Marauder champions, and they're just getting shot in the back. Yeah, with these Reavers, in my opinion, you just want to like... Well, and I don't think this is a good charge for these trolls. I think you just like keep shooting them and then uh, pull them back. I think because like she was riding off these Berserkers. So unfortunately, uh, they got caught up there. So that's a good get. Yeah, those trolls are doing serious damage, my god. Um, but yeah, otherwise these Reaver Archers just like keep cycle charging. Chase off these riding Berserkers, cycle charge that stuff. Tyrion, um, you may want to get like one of your Archers like just in a surround on um, Warfrick just to block him up. So that way you can get Tyrion can actually get his hits in. Because otherwise, yeah, this Mage Caster unfortunately looks like she's in trouble. Because uh, that's like normal Pendulums and normal Melkoths. Although she already did get, I think I saw like three Pendulum casts and like three Melkoths. So she has gotten like her money's worth as far as casting goes. Which has got good damage out there. So if she dies, that is unfortunate because I think she still has a little bit of Winds of Magic in the bag. But it's not as, um, it's not as bad as it could have been. Um... How are we doing here? So you have these healthy berserkers here. That's your mobility. Chase, that's good. Chase off these trolls. This is fantastic. That's really good. So they have seven models left that can still regenerate. So if you can chase those off, that's great. Um, in my opinion, if you're the Reavers, I think you want to focus on just taking out these uh, berserkers. Or just shooting. And use your last of your ammunition into these trolls. Try to beat them up as much as you can. So that way you can try to get them routing off as easy as you can. And then you can just chase them off with one of your units. Your Reavers. While the rest like Cycle Charge. Yeah, unfortunately, these ones are stuck here when Tyrion isn't in a position to uh, cover. If you're Tyrion, I think at this point, just, like, first of all, turn and fight these Marauders, route them off, uh, and just, like, try to take them out. Uh, because otherwise, yeah, like, you're not going to be able to catch a wolf Rick. He's at, like, 90 speed. He's probably going to be able to route off these archers, these Reavers uh, fast enough because he is, like, really good into something like this. So, yeah, I think your best bet is to, first of all, just try to just take these guys off, rear charge them, get them off, and then just get back into this, like, uh, pocket of the Silver and Guard. And yeah, with the Reavers, just keep shooting in without onto those Norse controls. Get as much poke damage in as you possibly can. And uh, you got some spears here that you can try to get back. Um, 32 models is nice. They're just low HP. Um, otherwise, how else are we doing here? So yeah, Norse goes slightly ahead on the balance of the power. Best way to get better micro, because that's what's getting me. I think, yeah, practice. You just got to keep practicing. Eventually, he'll get better, especially with a faction like Norska, because they kind of force you to get good at micro, because you need to be able to micro with them while they're one of those high micro uh, intensive factions. So yeah, practice will definitely uh, be what uh, the best uh, way to get it good, get good at it. Okay, we got a bit of a lag spike, but it's not too bad, I think. Unfortunately, yeah, these Silverhands were by themselves against Marauder Champions and Norse Control, so eventually they just got ground down by the, just the sheer overwhelming, like, points. Because this is, like, Marauder Champions are 1,000, these guys are, like, 900, I think, like that. So that's 18, 1900, just, like, on top of them. So, yeah, that's rough. So unfortunately, your best pocket of, like, holding it for tree is off the table. You don't have a mage to try to bring them down. And Sunfang isn't good against Marauder Champions because they're too heavily armored. So, yeah. Do you really do need to rely on Tyrion to be able to grind down a lot of the stuff? Which, like, Marauder Champions are a really strong unit. And Wolfric is still healthy. So, if, if you're a Norse guy, I think, oh, and you still have these guys. You want to use save your Sunfang for these guys. This Sunfang might still be online at this point. Because I don't think he's... actually don't know if he's casted it yet. But, yeah. Just keep cycle charging. That's really all you got. Yeah, a rear charge onto these Norse controls is nice. Actually, look at that damn leadership spike. You can maybe get them routed off soon. Almost there. They're at 1, 3. Minus 8. They should be routing. Okay, so now you get these Reavers and just chase them off. Um, you chase them off. You get do you have no more ammunition. You have one shot left. So just get a shot onto those guys. What Do what you can. Those Berserkers. Otherwise, yeah, you keep chasing him off, and Tyrion is just, you're on Marauder Champion clearing duty. You just gotta grind these dudes down. Okay, show them where the real champion is, alright? Yeah, otherwise... Yeah, just keep chasing them with your Reavers. Your Reavers, okay, if you want to pull away from the Berserkers, that's fine. Just, like, pull away, like, up that way. 
up that way so that you keep like in proximity to the trolls and you keep them routing or at the least chase them with this one so that because the berserkers can only like go after one yeah if you want to charge the berserkers in the open field that's fine just pull out really fast like pull out really fast because otherwise they'll do a lot of damage into you um if you're Tyrion, um sunfang will do okay yeah that's just not that much damage yeah the thing with sunfang is it only does um no armor piercing damage zero percent armor piercing so in my opinion with sunfang you want to uh use it on those berserkers for example if they're bunched up that's the target for them so yeah charging into them and getting another charge right onto like the side flank or whatever that's good very good but now you disengage yep that's smart disengage otherwise looks like the troll shattered these reavers are going to come in like the rear charges will be nice but yeah Tyrion. In my opinion, when Wolfric comes in here, don't really try to keep pathing through all the infantry. You're on foot, so you're not going to be able to path through effectively. Just grind down. Just let him just fight whatever he fights that's right by him. So you can try to grind down this stuff. Because he has infantry size, which is good, because that means he's going to just take less damage, because less models can just touch him. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, just try to grind down these guys, because, yeah. You just take a look, take some time to just watch Tyrion do battle. Can you swing? As soon as I zoom in, now he's just... Okay, there we go. Big ol' stab. Very nice. Stab, he's dead. Um, otherwise, yeah, these Berserkers. Lost most of your mobility support. Okay. Love the Seaguard shooting him. That's very good. In my opinion, you want to shoot these Marauders, specifically the one that's most beat up. Because when you shoot them um, stuff, they get a um, shot by a missile, for, like small arms fire, leadership debuff. So just stuff like that can help you just clear them out, get them gone. Um... So I think, yeah, shooting into the back of these Marauder Champions, I think, would be the better play than shooting on Wolfric. You're just, first of all, it's more reliable, you can more reliably hit them. But also that yeah, little leadership debuff can actually help. Especially in a point, like, at this point in the game, like, it's a, it's a game of in inches almost. So you just want to really get it whatever you can. Yeah, Tyrion's doing his best. So the good thing for Tyrion is he has not had his star Heart of Avalon pot. He still has his Heart of Avalon, so... The problem is, if you lose so much of your assets to the point where he gets army lost before he can, his Heart of Avalon can actually, like, pay dividends, then that's that's rough. That's tough for you. Um, so, in my opinion, you want to keep, like, these Reavers, for example. You want to keep them alive as long as you want as possible, just to keep as much balance of power in your uh, back pocket here. So that you can make sure he doesn't just get army lost. You want them to have to, like, they have to just kill Tyrion instead of just letting them army lost him. Yeah, Tyrion... Grinding against these Marauder Champions. Doing good work here. Unfortunate lag spikes, but, you know, we need to. Another swing. Okay, solid rear charge here. That could be some solid leadership bomb. Some of these guys are getting close to wavering, but Marauder Champions are just really t durable. Yeah, otherwise, the problem is I'm, I'm worried that Tyrion is just going to, like, uh, uh, like, uh, get army lost. Before he can uh, get his heart of, heart of Avalon. If Heart of Avalon can pop, he might be able to do good. Okay. Do you have 100 champions? Okay, that's tough. Yeah, I think uh, Wolfric will be able to just cycle charge him. Uh, this isn't going to do that well. Sunfang, unfortunately. Sunfang just is not as good as it should be. It's just really bad. <laughs> it's actually just like a genuinely worthless item. Especially because you paid 200 gold for it. It's just, yeah. It just doesn't do enough damage. Our champions coming in here. Yeah, this should set up Wolfric to just finally chunk him down um, to maybe Army Allison. Heal, okay, his heal just went off. That's a big fat heal. So that should be saving us a little bit. You got this rear charge coming in. I don't think there's anything here that's in a position to just rat off. Because, yeah, Berserkers and Marauder Champions have really good leadership. Anything else here for the High Elves? Nope, just him and this, uh, Tyrion and his Reavers. Yeah, Standard Ground is popping off at like a good time so that he's not going to be able to do as much damage. Tyrion, yeah, just keep on just chunking away as best as you can. Okay, the thing about Heart of Avalon is it's got a two-minute cooldown, and but unlimited uses. So if he can go two minutes without needing to get a heal again, then he might actually be able to do something. He get, can get a second heal, maybe. But yeah, it's going to go really down to the wire. Okay, Tyrion getting some good hits in on Wolfric. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, Wolfric definitely, I, you want to pull out and just, like, try to grind him down. Um, just cycle charge him in the in the back, or something like that. Because, yeah, if he gets hits onto you, goddamn, Tyrion's good. 
In some situations, Tyrion can actually be really good. Yeah, look at this guy. He doesn't give a damn. Yeah, rear charging him smart. Okay, can he get hits on the Wolfric, or is he just going to try to... I think you're fine either way. Trying to get hits on the Wolfric is smart. Um, yeah, he's going to pull out. Okay, and I can just get onto the... Just attack the infantry. Don't try to chase him through. You're not going to be able to when you're on foot. Yep. Keep fighting. Smart. So these Marauder Champions are getting close to routing off. The Berserkers... What's the thing with them in range? Do they get unbreakable, or... Okay, no. They don't get a... I don't think they get a buff from it. Hold on. Like Secure Lord been there right nearby. Huh. Only 47 damage this thing with this much HP left? That's weird. Huh. Anyway. So yeah, Tyrion gets a hit onto Wolfric. Or, or, or Wolfric got a hit on the Tyrion. Now Tyrion onto Wolfric. If he can hold out, I think he's got like 30 seconds left. Or 20, 30 seconds left till his next uh, Heart of Avalor can pop. If he can just hold on, especially because now the Berserkers, they're not armor piercing, so he can actually tank them a bit better than Marauder Champions. I think just keep fighting. White Phantom Repost is active, just keep fighting the Berserkers. Just clear them out. Force Wolfric to have to come into you, so he can't just cycle charge. Okay, Heart of Champions, really timely Heart of Champions. A little Phantom Repost and Stand Your Ground coming in here to try to just mitigate that debuff. Okay. Is he gonna be able to get Is he gonna be able to get the heal? Is he gonna be able to just take out Wolfric enough or is he gonna get Armin lost? He got the heal off. Okay, I think that's yeah. I think I think he's got it. I think Tyrion's got it. And the Sunfang in here onto the Marauder Berserkers. Did Sunfang finally just do something? Okay, yeah. Tyrion pulls out the win. That is incredible. Um yeah, amazing work there from Tyrion. Uh just yeah, that's awesome. GG to the ha uh, to both of you guys. Um God damn, what a way to end the tournament. Uh, yeah, can we get into the limit stream, please? I really want to see his, uh, his value. God damn. Yeah, Tyrion, 14,000 HP, uh, d damage dealt. 2,000 damage dealt as a gold value. Just fantastic work. Sis of Avalon did really well. I think they only got to use, like, half their ammo, but just fantastic for them. Um, your Shadow Scouts did really well. She had a lot of really good targets for her Pendulums and her Melkoths. Silver and York. Someone guard just did a great job holding. These guys are so... They're, they're basically like High Elf Triari. They just hold for so long. They're so reliable. Fantastic unit. And your Reaver Archers did really well. Just They were able to keep online for a long time. Your... God. Uh, or yeah, your Reaver Archers also... Lawn and Seaguard did well. Your Reaver Archers did fantastically. These guys, these guys are such a good unit. I think they're easily like one of the best uh, light cavalries in the game. You can even argue best. I think they're just fantastic. Definitely a bright spot on the High Elf roster. As far as their cavalry goes. Spearmen did okay. They held as long as they could. That's kind of all they could really do there. But yeah, Tyrion, just an absolute champion. Holding on for so long. Right now, two Marauder champions and a Berserker and then Wolfric at the end. Just what a, what a beast. Yeah, Wolfric, Wolfric still got great value. Uh, onto that uh, that caster. The boats did really well. The Sea Fangs did really well. Onto the uh, Law of the Sea Guard, the Sisters of Avalorn. And he himself still got good hits into Tyrion. Marauder Champions, they did great work here, just grinding against those Silver and Guards and those Spearmen, grinding down Tyrion still. Um, meant to put Tyrion on his horse. Oddly enough, you actually might have been better off here with him on, at least at that last stage, you're better off because he's a smaller target on the horse, so less of the infantry can actually hit him. Um, so that actually helped you out a bit at the end, having him on foot. But yeah, the, um, the Deathcaster got some solid work, and that Buna early on on the Sisters was really nice. The Trolls did an okay job. But yeah, Berserkers, they were able to grind down a lot of this, uh, just put a lot of pressure onto them. Yeah, it's Cactic. Completely forgotten? No, completely on purpose. Okay, everything calculated. Uh, yeah, the Javelins, they, they had a rough time of it because the High Elves had such a mobility advantage. And the Marauders just, you know, they did okay. They're mostly just there to be chaff. But yeah, um, GG's. Fantastic way to end this tournament with Tyrion, just putting the whole entire battle on his back. Uh, whole one-man army. What a beast. Otherwise, thank you guys. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, In Cars does take the win. And uh, congratulations to In Cars. You are going to get like that, um, whatever that extra roll is called or whatever. I forget what it's called. I, my apologies. But, um, yeah, congrats to the win. Thank you to everybody else who played. Thank you to everyone who showed around for the stream. This was a lot of fun. And um, I will see you guys later. Take care.